Hi, it's Bram here again from Fitty and Comets and Collectibles, and uh, we're here with Vaughan and Hadley. Going to do, I have a little talk again about what we've procured and, and um, stock that I've got in, and all things to do with pop culture and not pop culture and, and whatever you like, really. Okay, so um, I'll kick it off. Um, Hadley, what have you acquired? Since the last time we talked to you, it's been a little while. Haven't you? It's been like three weeks or four weeks. Yeah, it's been a few weeks. Yeah, good to see you guys. Yeah, good to see you again. Um, I've been bit of a bit of a nostalgia kick lately. Um, I actually brought in today some superpowers figures. I got a Batman, a Robin, Doctor Fate, and Firestorm. Um, okay. Yeah, slowly rebuilding my um, my H superpower H collection. Hadley, that superpowers collection though. Um, remember the one we saw of Clint? What was Lex yeah. Luthor and stuff? Yeah, and, and, and Dark Side. They were slightly different he had, size, are they? Yeah, them on card, though, eh? But they, they were a different size, didn't no, they? No, they were all this. No, they're, they're, they're the same size. They're, yeah. they're all the same <clears> size, <throat> but he actually had them original on the fucking um, card. But, oh, I don't know. Just looks loose with him. Is it a big power armor? You know, the, yeah. the one? It just yeah, looks yeah. big. I don't know. This looks like it was bigger. I don't know. Well, he's he, the, his figure is quite a bit bigger. Um, there was another because one. of because the accessory and stuff oh, like yeah. that, yeah. Um, what, was the, uh, what was the other. Um, Super villain that in that series. Dark side. Yeah, so the yeah, first one Dark was, side was quite big on there, wasn't he? There was yeah. Choker, uh, he's Penguin, me. Dark Side, yeah. um a lot of it's uh, original gods type stuff. Um Yeah, and then they sort of did a bit more second string made up figures towards the end. Um but yeah, I just came across them. Um I have most of my figures from when I was a kid, but not a complete run. No capes, no accessories. But actually, that doesn't really matter to me that much. I just like having them around What's to this have a jam with. Nostalgia thing, right? Like, yeah. You have it again. It's like, like we talked about last time. I don't know. For, for me, it, my parents got rid of well, my mum, basically, got rid of a lot of our stuff and gave it away to other kids. Let um, it go, Bram. I know. It was, it was quite dramatic. Um, you come home from school and you're like, I got rid of all those toys. <laughs> uh, you feel like saying, well, why? <laughs> anyway, it was all gone and given away to people. But um, you do see them, and like even when you got those fears and stuff, like um, like Retcon used to have and stuff like that, and retro events, and you go there and you see them, like holy shit, I, I should actually, I'd like to collect them again. They're um, they're just really attractive figures. Like they're they're like it's all the primary colours. They're big. They're bold. And that's um, a, that's a real good eighty style Batman too. Yeah, like to me, these are like probably the best versions of these characters. Yeah, the classic look. Yeah, they're the classic form. look. Yeah, like what Robin's ones, classic right? Yeah, I mean with the with the green undies. So you've obviously got these loose loose here today. Mm. What that that would it have come with a cape or Batman? Yeah, or? so Batman. Everyone I think came with at least one accessory. But if they had a cape, that was their accessory. Mm. Yeah. Um, Aquaman had like a Good trident. Definitely had one. Eh? Yep, he had yeah. a cape. Actually, Firestorm didn't have anything. Poor bastard. Look at that. That was him. That was that. him. That was oh, all his power. And you, that's right, you squeeze his legs together, and like, oh, I forgot yeah. that. So they all have... That one's probably not so good. Robin's pretty good. He's got a karate chop. Yeah, boy. What the hell is all that? Gummy stuff. Oh. oh somebody's enjoying Someone it Someone might much. have to get a return. All right, okay. <laughs> um, Let me see this. But yeah, I'm, I'm not looking at completing the whole set, because there are frankly some characters in there that are... Just ridiculous, hard to find, and super expensive. Um, well, how's that ridiculous? Um, the the accessories they had though, Hadley. Yeah, Superman had that like freaking Power Walker thing. Yep, I had one of Man, those. Still hardly oh, you had, had that. <laughs> yep, you had power Walker. And I know we've talked about this before, <laughs> Molly, but that, that was the most ridiculous. Um, I mean, who thought of that? Should be fired. Did yeah. we talk about that on here? Or no, no, we, no, we talked about that with Clint, didn't we? Because Clint had it. Yeah. We went around the studio. And we did right. that. We did it at the studio, and he had it. And it, was like, <laughs> it wasn't a Minton box, but it had the box. Yeah, yeah. And they just so lumbering and slow. Like, yeah. it was like um, it was like the you <laughs> remember the alien, aliens when she's in that um, yeah the power loader yeah power and loader she, she fights the the alien queen thing it's like that yeah. it was like that but she needed it Superman hardly need that he just melted with her eyes yeah not the queen with his eyes <laughs> but yeah okay so, um, yeah those are cool got a couple of those to fill in some holes they are awesome actually um bring in today kind of a golden age but this action figures a lot of them. Um, that power, the superpowers, like the end of the eighties. How, yeah. how many was um, released in that series? I think it was somewhere around thirty total. I think there were about you? twelve in the first wave. Um, probably about another twelve in the second wave, and then they started to go off the tracks a bit in the third one. 
Uh, how many of these do you think you got now? Uh, I'm only really going for like the Justice League characters. So I mm, think okay. maybe 10 or so mm. at the most. But just enough to be like, yeah, you know, those are the ones I want to look at. Yeah, yeah. Good representation. So at home, Hadley, do you actually display them? You have stands for the little buggers to stand on? Or um, do you put them in a case or something like that? Not these ones. Yeah. I'm... I need to rearrange my bookshelves to do that. Yeah. Um, I got some of my Star Wars figures on displays and stuff, but yeah. not not these guys. But they'll be integrated in there soon. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they're just I'm not terribly focused on being completist. I don't need to. Yeah. Have every last figure, but yeah. It was exactly how I feel with um. I'm redoing the GI Joes that I had as a kid. Mm. That's it. I don't <coughs> want any other ones. Yeah. Because I don't want to go mental, but they're just the ones that I care personally about. So they're yeah. the ones I'll, I'll make an effort to do. And even the accessories they wanted you kept, like the windsurfer. I mean, they're so awesome. It's hard to sort of. Funny um, enough, piss <laughs> off. They wanted the, the backpack. Yeah. Huh? I don't know why you still got it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you didn't let me finish. Funny enough, I'll bin that. You microwaved it. <laughs> <laughs> one, one Wait, no, I, I do have one pack of double happies left from when I was a kid. <laughs> Oh, actually, no, you've so got more than that. Because you I? gave me some, I'll put them in my gun cabinet. Have you still got some? Yeah, you gave them to me. Yeah, they're in there. Oh, the proper packs? Yeah, there's like five packs. Fuck, let's get those out. <laughs> yeah, okay, we'll blow the windsurfer up. Yeah. <laughs> we'll make a sale that, first, though. So that really is childhood nostalgia. <laughs> right, right. Right. <laughs> yeah, I actually did that a lot to my, um, even my Star Wars figures. I don't know why I did that. For me, it was the uh, little uh, green army yeah. men. That's what I used yeah. to blow up all the time. No, I used to blow up my actual I things. I blow up and, anything. And, and <laughs> <is>. <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> Although I do remember like going to my mate's house, and he had... You know like, how a lot of the G.I. Joe vehicles had like engine panels? Or they had like just mountings and sort of stuff everywhere? Yeah. He used to stuff those double happies, like, let it go. <laughs> sort of throw the it road. off the deck, and you're like, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> this is next level. <laughs> like, I, I'm not sure if I can be party to this. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that, that's pretty much every Kiwi kid that they had action figures. I was a lot looser with my toys than I was with like comics. Comics, I, I used to, I couldn't stand somebody just, um, yeah, being rough as shit on her. Or, <laughs> I remember a friend of mine he wrote on the cover and it's just like, oh, you're pissing me off. But <laughs> with the that. toys, yeah, as soon as fireworks came round, you know, every, <laughs> <laughs> that was it. Like, what have I got? Over the season, man. yeah. And now you bought something else too, Hadley. Um, that Snake Eyes figure. I did. And I did. I'll tell you what, um, obviously you can't see it, but I'll, I'll tell you what, the, the um, attention to detail is actually pretty impressive. Yeah, so this is a Series 1 classified Snake Eyes, um, all black version. He comes with laser pistols and stuff, nice sword, um, but I've also got a replacement Uzi and sidearm yeah. and a few other little pieces. But I'm so pleased you've done that, because you know as soon as you said laser bloody gun yeah, it was yeah. just like are you kidding me that yeah. sounds ridiculous well they did that in a Marvel it Legends it looks so like, much cooler with the with the proper Uzi with that, that Marvel Legends Deadpool I got the grey suited Deadpool he yeah. came with a ridiculous like laser gun that was I think it was blue yeah, oh, yeah, and it, like, yeah. it didn't fit and it just it, well it just looked ridiculous it just what size is this uh, so that's 6 inches no your toy oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah no no yeah. Six, six we should really wear pants <clears> on this <throat> podcast <laughs> it's getting hot in here yeah <laughs> Um, yeah, six inches, um, he was actually, I got him overseas, but got him sent to my mate's place and eventually got, got it sent over here. Right. What was the series again, sorry? Um, uh, classified. Oh, classified. Yeah. I've seen, so, I've seen, they've got Cobra Commander, right? Out here. Yeah. The Cobra um, Commander, I think they had Scarlet. Yep. And, uh, Duke. Yep. I think Royal that's what they got out there. But you see they're random and you, if you order them online, they're actually... They can be, um... You, they, know, you can't just go, oh, I want snake eyes. Like, yeah, some, or something. Can you let us in your some, some retailers will load things as an assortment, so it's like a single barcode, and they'll just pick whatever is on the shelf and yeah. give that to you, regardless if you want you know, four four roadblocks instead of yeah. four ninjas. <laughs> oh, <Jesus. laughs> um, but yeah, so that can be a bit tough on collectors sometimes. But yeah, thought I'd bring that in just to... I love it. I think it actually does, it does mm. look like the original snake eyes that I remember. And just a bigger form. It looks awesome. I'll tell you what, that, that the belt's you, unusual. The belt's moving because, it, you know, it should be loose. It was always been a, a belt, but it, when it was on the smaller figures, it's yeah, just yeah. always molded on. So yeah. it's quite cool just to see how many parts, like this, what would you call it, a bandolier or something, is it? Oh, it's yeah. just a, just, a it's strap attached with to the scabbard. So it's a bandolier scabbard. Or like yeah, attached to the with scabbard. the grenades all stuck to it. It's all movable. Whatever it is, I don't think it was standard issue. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> just not and get that off the shelf. Eh? You've been issued this what a katana with grenades attached to it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Have you lost Absolutely. a knife here, or have you just not brought it? Just, oh, I think the knife trustworthy. No, I think the knife might still be in the packet. Yeah, hope, so. Mm, hope so. Yeah. Um, Incomplete. <laughs> yeah. One cool yeah, thing. Double heavy there. One thing they they did in the or Hasbro did in the G.I. Joe line now is they've got drop down hips. Which is what a is weird it? thing to describe, but normally oh, I see what you mean. You the can legs sort of stick out, up there, move it, yeah, put it yeah. back. and they can only move so far in like a 45, yeah. 90 degree angle type of thing. But then you can drop it down, and it gives them even more. Ah, so it's actually got like a, a bit of a so that's a, almost that, like a slit that will just drop up and down. And yeah, <clears throat> so like you know, like the old figures used to be able to just do like the full point stance yeah, type yeah, of thing. Yeah. That one you could probably get him to sit down, and he wouldn't fall over too yeah, much or you could yeah. do high kicks or you know a lot of the detail the, the, the wrinkles things. on the clothes and everything on the yeah. pants and stuff as well <clears throat> i'll tell you what that's more important though now you don't wouldn't think of it there's a there's a guy called the kiwi collector on instagram and he does a lot of um posing of figures and does like action shots of them and i'll tell you what with the art- <clears throat> articulation it actually makes it look um pretty damn amazing to be honest yeah some really really lovely stuff coming out even the guys out of the states i mean yeah, yeah. Like it's just it's super impressive um with, with the figures they got next the articulation is so much better you can actually pose them so much better um, makes a big difference. It's um, quite it's quite a big difference to the old uh, figures that you <laughs> the old yeah. Batman figure here and stuff, isn't it? Yeah. Whereas even this in the day was probably pretty good with the bendable legs. Just shows how good GI Joe always was with posability, I reckon. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it was. To be at that that point and have so many more pieces of articulation than uh, even other the original series, figures. Yeah. yeah. Like um, my imagination was so good as a kid, I could actually play Star Wars with my Joe Joe, no problem. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, you could strangle out a Star Wars figure, but the Star Wars figure never strangled out a Joe Joe figure, unfortunately. Um, the other reason I bought him today is because I went and saw the Snake Eyes movie, Snake Eyes Origins. You told me it wasn't even out yet. This was only last week. Oh man. <laughs> now was it good or? Well, what's your pick on that? Because um, we've obviously it's always mixed. Um, Wait, how did you see Snake Eyes? At the Mercury Twin Cinema. Holy hell, I didn't realise that. That was like, the, it came out the I'm pretty last... Pretty sure probably you, Bram, you turned up, Bram said, oh, is that movie out? Yeah, and you said, it? no. Yeah. When? Today? Yeah, Today. that's when you walked in. No, I don't think so. I don't believe so. <laughs> <laughs> I think you've watched the pirate you know, version, you think this nice is coming out in two weeks. No, do you have my back? <laughs> Not at all. No, I was, um, yeah, I think it came out the week after school holidays. Um, I went, got like a Sunday night screening, and I was the only one there. So oh, I had the whole place to bullshit. myself. It was lovely. I mean, BS. <laughs> no, that is, that's awesome. That I could check a, my phone. I could amazing. do my likes. <laughs> stretch out. I don't want to sit here yeah. anymore. I'm going to sit over there. So, so what's your take on? I mean, don't obviously run it all. Run it. Down. I mean, people, he just said he checked his phone, so that can't be. <laughs> yeah, that's not a good sign. <laughs> no, I I enjoyed it. Um, it was quite a departure from the previous movies. Um, they sort of changed some things to tell the story, but it sort of ends up at the same place where you'd want it to be so they just made little things different here and there um yeah it's an interesting movie i'd like someone else to have gone seen it so i can talk to them about it <laughs> you're the only person to see it well, well you told everyone it's not out um yeah well he did say i mean i don't want to say too much but it sounded like the, the way he s- structured the answer that it sounded like he didn't see it well, well, anyway. please enjoy it <laughs> um, yeah. please enjoy it by yourself without avoiding anyway I mean um, just like new Star Wars movies I'm happy that there's just something new, there something out yeah, to watch new it. content right? so how yeah. far removed was it from the original sort of comic the actual character well or how about the character was a character I mean when I saw it I don't, this is going to sound bad but he's an Asian guy right on the movie yep. and yet I don't think the original basis for that character wasn't he a he was a white dude white dude right American white dude yeah. um, Storm Shadow was Asian yeah, was he? Yeah. Okay. So I suppose because he started off originally as a Caucasian Af- American soldier who was Vietnam, really good right? at his job type of thing, um, he was a commando, and then they made him a ninja. That's kind of to me where he got really cool. Um, so yeah, it was an interesting thing to change up. Um, quite a large piece piece of his character, mm. um, but for a character that traditionally doesn't talk. <laughs> Or, yeah, show his, or his face. Oh, he's quite, he's quite a, 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 a chatterbox. Oh, yeah, we we, we saw his face you know? anyway. We watched the trailer. Yeah. yeah. Oh my god, well, that's ruined it. Because even in the <laughs> even in the comics, like if you if they showed his face back in the when he was a Nam, he like, always had a hat always on. Oh, it's blurry. Yeah. Or something. He was um, always in the shadows reason. slightly. Yeah, so it's very dreadish. Like whenever you, oh, you never saw his face. Yeah. 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 
Um, and you know, that's and the then comments. in the end, it got burned off. Just like Dread. Dread never got his face painted off. Yes, he did. Oh, oh, you did. Oh, they did, man. Yeah, yeah, you got robotic eyes and stuff. Mm. Everything. His face melted off. So. Mm, it is just like that. Yeah. <laughs> well, hold on, I'm <laughs> seeing some plagiarism. Yeah. <laughs> so I'd love for one of you to go see it so we can talk about it next time. Oh, well, I'll tell you what I do want to see. I'm um, getting off the subject a little bit, but... Um, Suicide, Suicide Squad, only because James Gunn directed it, and I just rewatched um, Guns of the Galaxy one today, actually last night and this morning, and I can't get it. I love it because the soundtrack's awesome, the characters are awesome. You still get the comedy, you get still get action, you still get a really good storyline. I'm hoping that's in the new Suicide Squad. I didn't hate the old Suicide Squad with Enchantress and that. I didn't People like really it. hated on it, but I didn't think it was that. I bad. thought it was boring as shit. Really? Yeah. Oh, I thought it was alright. I thought it was a really challenging movie to watch. Mm. Mm. Okay. I really expected a lot of you as, as a viewer. Yeah, yeah. I just didn't like the characters. I think it was all a bit, I don't know, too easy. Almost, mm. it, just, it was just boring. Whereas this new one, based on trailers alone, looks so much more interesting. Um, I don't know if other people liked it, but I liked the fact that King Shark was in it and he was animated and he looked ridiculous and he was real thick. I like. I don't know why I like that. You mean I on the new Suicide Squad? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, no, that looks awesome. It does look good. Yeah, I mean that character looked dead to me. And um, I mean, if I like the old one, then obviously I'm going to really love this. Next I think one. I, like well, I love that. James Gunn anyway. I think I like it that uh, Will Smith isn't it. Um, getting jiggy with it is there um, something, something to me about like whether it's the superpower fan in me of like really crappy B characters or like the Silver Age fan in me like movies that have King Shark in it like or Polka Dot or just the love dot. yeah like, like that's characters you would never right? expect yeah. to see in your lifetime on a movie yeah. in a movie that that's fantastic like and, and there's even even um John Cena's character. I don't know what the character is. I'm, I mean, oh, I Peacemaker. Know Peacemaker is it? How come his arm comes off? I don't know. I just saw a picture of him there where he's holding his own arm like this, and it's come off, and it's come off right here at the shoulder joint. Oh, I don't Are know. You what... thinking of TDK? Um, Nathan, Nathan Fillion. Yes, yeah, I don't know. So Nathan know Nathan enough. Nathan Fillion's character TDK, his arms and his legs can come off, and he can control them. Oh, so it's not John Cena. So it might be dude. him, unless that was. Yeah, a, no, no, a probably is. I, I probably is. I just saw. I just saw a scene of it on Instagram. Like, what does he do? Does he on? throw them as, and they do things, or well, they shoot what? guns out of oh, them? Or? Oh, they act independently of him, or rather, he can control them. So I'm so not. I'm crawl, not sure how they're gonna like crawl. crawl, 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 crawl yeah, yeah, yeah. That's exactly what I was gonna say. So crawl up to a control panel and open it up. That's actually that's actually not a bad because there's always a control panel. But then they got the boomerangs on it again. I effing hated the boomerang. Yeah. Oh, I thought it was a, this worst character. It, 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 even as he, 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 wrecked, he? he wrecked the first one for me. I mean, I liked the first one, but he, he was the worst character. I would say. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I restructure. He was the worst character for me. Yeah, even above the Joker, the Jared Leto. Joker? Um, oh, I, he was my I, favorite. I, I, yeah, oh, kind of, yeah, that was actually I liked the, the I liked the Joker <laughs> out of uh, out of all of them. Harley mm. Quinn and the Joker was actually the best part of. But also, you, I know you don't you don't quite. You don't really get whole into the superhero genre. You prefer um, sort of things like, like you know, Batman, where they don't have a superpower, but they have a set of skills. Or something. Yeah, you yeah, prefer yeah. that, right? Yeah. And I, I mean, I, I, I don't, I don't not prefer that, but I do like Batman and stuff like that. But I just like, I, yeah. just as a character, like, and uh, to be honest, Joker sometimes gets overplayed. I know that um, everyone yeah, yeah. loved that last Joker movie with um, oh, Heath Ledger or something. I found that. I thought it was terrible. I thought it was annoying as hell. Um, whereas I, when I saw that, I thought like um, he tried too hard. Is, is my whereas I saw the Joker in Suicide Squad, mm. he actually looked a bit, um, bit scary and a bit of a horror and yeah, uh, so. a bit nasty. You know, oh, that's, oh, it was better for me than just that sort of. I don't know. I just uh, I just found that Heath Ledger movie a little bit annoying, even though a lot of people loved it. That's just my personal opinion. Well, do you think they just loved it because of the fact that in his memory, because he died, and people go, "Oh, well, it, it, he did. He was a good actor." Like blah, a blah, Princess blah. Diana moment. Well, I presume. Oh, like, I'm thinking that myself. <laughs> like, because I, I mean, because when I only because when I watched it, I was like, it looked like he was trying too hard, and that's mm. just the feeling I got. But um, I mean, people do rave about his particular performance, and mm. I, I, I don't know. I mean, you would love them in different. Oh, um, well, the movie was still good though. I, I enjoyed it. I think Batman Begins is my favorite of that series of of. Batman movies. I mm. think there's something about the ninja origin. Maybe it's just my love of ninjas, or just like <laughs> something about that first movie, which I gravitated more to. That was a great movie. Than the second yeah, or even it was the third a good one. Movie. Um, but yeah, like Heath Ledger's performance was good. 
there's lots of really questionable things that happen in that movie especially in the last one where you're just like that doesn't make any sense but i'll go with it mm. oh, i have a tie for that i um i prefer michael keaton and george clooney as batman um <laughs> just <laughs> see your face man. <laughs> <laughs> I hate both of those dicks. <laughs> I'll tell you what. I'll tell you I thought what. you were serious for a second. Actually, my face was just like... <laughs> I, just, I, just, I just remember you and I talking about one time going, oh, Michael Keaton, that's the fucking worst choice ever for a Batman. Uh, I, went, I went to school that day to go over <laughs> and, I, and I got on a bus. <laughs> and I left, left the school and I got on a bus. I went over and I saw my dad and... um. He was going, what the hell are you doing in town? <laughs> said, just oh, going to movie, mate. Just going to movie, dude. Yeah. Uh, I need some money. Yeah. And um, he gave me some money, and I actually watched other movies. And I'd been talking about that movie when it was coming out for six months, just saying to everyone, you've got to see it, it's going to be awesome. Oh. Well, well, I mean, I did it's, watch it's, it. Uh, you know, that that's kind of, I don't really like those over-the-top jokers, and I think that's where it started Jack, Was from. it Jack Nicholson in that Jack one? Nicholson. It was horrendous. I mean, you can get like... um. Having Cesar Romero as like Joker, like a, the acting stage, that's how it was kind of, that was so different, acceptable. Totally different type Yeah, acceptable. Of like when he tried to kind of be like that, I think, this is my own opinion, yeah, that uh, Jack Nicholson kind of tried to be like Cesar Romero, but a, like, I don't know, modernised version of it. And it was just terrible because he had the same makeup and everything. Watch me act the shit out of this. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God, yeah, you are. Yeah. Um, um, oh, d- d- you know, I love the 66 Batman. I can watch that oh, all yes, okay. day, every yeah. day. And that, but that's supposed to be like that, yeah. you know, then mm. that's, and <clears> I love it. I think um, all the characters are great in that. Yeah. But it's just when it comes to the movies, I'm quite particular. I'll tell you, I really like Christian Bale. Um, yeah, he was awesome. And a lot of people don't like Ben Affleck, but I really like Ben Affleck as Batman. Ben Affleck was great. Mm. I think he, he was awesome. just, he was just in a really shitty set of movies. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, I didn't mind, and Vaughn put me into another movie that was, I don't know when it was filmed, but The Accountant with Ben Affleck and yep. I thought that was amazing and it really added to I was like actually I, I really like Ben Affleck and I used to hate him yeah uh, as no, not hate him but I'll say I, I didn't prefer to see him in a movie he I was, watched a movie and he was in it I'm like uh, he seems a bit arrogant I mean more rats portrayed him as being arrogant but it's like you saw other movies and I'm like oh, he just doesn't him and Matt Damon when I saw him in The Encounter I thought that was just such a good movie oh yeah it was and he was a good he acted yeah. the, I he really was a good actor in that. I feel like the biggest problem with, with his Batman was the way his character was portrayed. Mm. He, they didn't really yeah. lean Wasn't into like what made Batman Batman enough mm. to the point where he was killing dudes left, right, and center. Yeah. And if he was, and he did, um, you know, what was the story behind that? Why did he all of a sudden he not cherish context. life and yeah. just murder people? <laughs> you know, like that, that would have been interesting to explore. Yeah, yes, but yes. they didn't even bother doing that. Um, but also what annoyed me the most is that he Batman needs to be the straightest dude in the room mm. like he's got the, the wildest costume but like he needs to be the guy that doesn't say jokes he mm. doesn't you yeah. know he just yeah. busts in the door Agreed. kicks ass and that's why the Snyder Cup was a bit better right because I don't know if you know they removed a lot of the comedic mm. ridiculousness and um, but they did put in a lot of slow motion yeah I, the, I, I think sometimes it, it adds to it like when I see it it has context, right? Like, even with the Dread movie, when they do slow motion, when everyone's on slow-mo, the drug, and he comes in, yeah. and it's, like, really slow, but they blow it, but it's so... Things that happen are so horrifically violent, and that's it also yeah. makes it way better. The thing with the Dread movie, 2012 Dread movie, that's supposed to be seen in 3D, so that slow-motion stuff is oh, just there okay. to actually show the, the 3D okay. portions of so it. So it's originally really released in 3D, was it? Yeah. Mm. Oh, I would have loved to have seen it. it. Um, Lift the bus out your 3D TV. Put on your goggles. Oh, yeah. Hey, put on my um, squint a little bit. Put on my bit. laser disc. <laughs> I think I can see it. Hey, get the old laser disc out. Crank that up, mate. Um, all those things that fell by the wayside. Um, yeah, but yeah, as, as far as Batman's goes, yeah, those those are my two go-to movies. And, and the one with Bane in it, with Christian Bale and Bane. I can't remember what that one's called now. Um, Rises, Dark Knight Rises. It was, yeah, it was, it, was, it was a good movie. I, I quite enjoyed it. I wasn't yeah. a fan of like that six month period where like Batman had a broken back. Yeah, yeah. And then it was just I don't like time jumps in films. I yeah. think they're 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 cop outs. But in that one, it was particularly noticeable because he was in like the bottom of a well in a prison with a broken back. Yeah, yeah. And then he fights his way back, but it happened so quickly. You're just like, really? Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Dude, if he almost goes like so, like it's a mom. like a um, Mario just goes up that freaking pit. He says, "Boom, boom, boom!" Fuck, he made it. That's amazing. <laughs> he must be Batman. Yeah, he is Batman. 
He should have flown. <laughs> if <he should> <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, I need to go through and watch those movies again to, before I. That I've watched a few times, and I, I do. Lo- I mean, I watched it quite a few times. That mm. particular one because it was on. Um, Netflix or something, so I just watch it when I had nothing to there do. There are other movies on Netflix. <laughs> nah, I just, you know that I watch things repetitively. <laughs> I'll Rick and Morty and stuff like that, I'll just watch it over. And South Park, I'll watch it over and over and over. Um, but, uh, like, movies that, if I just have it and I've got nothing to do, I'll, like, oh, I'll just watch it. It's a oh, shitty dude, day. I actually um, heard that Why the Last Man has been oh, made to a Netflix yeah. yeah, I just saw the trailer for that. Um, and so I went, oh, this is awesome, because I actually read Why the Last Man. I loved it. I think I yeah, gave yeah, you all yeah, the yeah, you um, books. Yeah, yeah. And, um, I went on Disney today and I said, like, oh, fuck, I can't wait. Is it on? I couldn't find it. What about What If? Marvel's What If? Is that on yet? Well, I haven't looked. I, I don't think at, that's I just looked yet. at stuff I wanted to look at. Fuck, and it'll be good anyway. What are you talking about? <laughs> nah, it will be good. That, that one does sound good. It's animated, eh? Yeah, it's animated. Um, Someone online told me that. And you said that's the only way they could have done it. And I, I didn't know at the time. I was like, oh, that's stupid, obviously. I'm like, uh, yeah, it won't be animated. And you're like, no, definitely will be. And so I'm going, okay, of course they animate you, idiot. <laughs> Otherwise, I mean, the production value. Yeah, I think that one's out next week. Mm-hmm. Or pretty soon, yeah. Why isn't Why the Last One um, Man on available in New Zealand? It's on, it's on Hulu. I'm American not sure what that's on. It might be on Netflix. I'm not sure. But Hulu's oh, sometimes thought... Amazon Prime. Is that correct? Oh, Apparently, is it? I think, I, Hulu, I think Hulu is the same. Like, it's it's Hulu Amazon was, Prime. Hulu was like a combination of a few different companies that weren't amazon or netflix yeah uh-huh. but i'm not sure yeah i'm actually not sure i'll what. have to have a look i'll have to look <coughs> i just saw that i thought what i thought so, so i might have i might have got this what right. is why the, said, what's why the last man one I, I, i've never read it I've, I've got a lot of your issues but i haven't read it mm, why the last man is pretty much mm. a story of the last man on earth oh okay but all the women have survived there's some some oh, disease dear. some disease that could be covid oh hey Vaughn. What a terrible concept. If you're the last man. <laughs> yeah, but you forgot. Most women are bitches. Mm. No. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't they cut that one out? Yeah, you're quite right. <laughs> um, nah, no, they're not. Well, I mean, so. if there's eight listeners, I mean, I mean, it's a good chance it might be one woman. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I think, I think. Power of the people. It's actually a really good story. <laughs> they're... they're does become a lot of people that look out for him and try That's and get through. That. That's not uh, like but the thing is, the it? other thing was, it not just man, um, anyone with the Y chromosome. chromosome. So uh, it was um, animals, animals as too. well. Every, every, <clears throat> there was no animal, male animals. There was no, um, apart from this guy um, and his monkey or chimpanzee. Yeah, he's got a little monkey. Yeah. He's got uh, a monkey on his... Capuchin monkey. Yeah, yeah. as they're the only two actual male things in existence on Earth at that monkey's going to be busy. <laughs> hey, <boy>. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> but he's homosexual. It's like the guy. Oh, no. Um, it was um, Brian K. Vaughan. Yeah, Brian K. Vaughan. He, he's very good. Yeah, he's written a lot of things. There's something else like, Oh, Vertigo. Saga. I loved Saga as well by the same guy, Brian K. Vaughan. Um, so Saga and Why the Last Man were just excellent bloody uh, yeah. comics at the time. The, the, the only f- couple of comics that I read in order in a series of, of reading. And, um, yeah. So, But I heard nothing about this Why the Last Man coming out. I heard that they've been in development for a long long time and i'm not sure what the causes of that was but it was like when i, I remember reading and hearing about walking dead getting a tv series mm. I thought, hey that's cool but why the last man should have been a tv series by now because it was so good yeah um it, it just reminded me like preacher like it, it's just something that could really be adapted really easily yeah well if it was following the story it, it's almost like it's funny you say walking dead because as a tv series it would be a very similar kind of yeah, vain. Yeah, um, but way more interesting because it's not just zombies every bloody attack. They've got lots of gangs. I, I know there was gangs and stuff in Walking Dead, but it's got a much more focused story. I think. Yeah, yeah, it's very cool. But you, you like you said, uh, uh, reading Walking Dead though, a lot of really super strong characters in it. Too. I love, I love reading yeah. The Walking Dead. Yeah, but you see, watching is a bit punishing. Like the first bit, you, you didn't you say the first part of it was actually not that. But, not that bad. The first couple of series was good because <clears throat> it, it ran true to the comic, and then mm. um, I suppose it still did, but it just got played out. It just became a, um, a you know a, a drama for yeah, men. Dragged out, you know. Dragged it, just, out. it was dragged out. Yeah, yeah. So it's a soap opera for for middle aged 
But what mean really? And saying that though, like um, uh, as far as stocks go going for me for um selling, uh, like Walking Dead, a few auctions that I have got, um, the the comics are the, so collectible and it's so they've gone so well in price. If you can get them at the right price, the comics man, are amazing, and they always they stayed amazing the whole well, way there through. Was, there's a set, and I was talking to Clint about it, and they're really hard to complete. There's a set, the I think they're B covers, and there's the Negan baseball bat. Lucille that goes right across. I think it's five or f I think it's five or six covers, and it's just the bat. But it starts with the hand on the bat, on the bottom of the bat. Goes right across. Five connecting covers. Really hard to complete. So whenever you get those, if you can win those or on an auction or buy that. them. No, I don't. I mean, I've, had, I've worked, only ever had one or two of them. Oh, right. ever. Oh, you didn't get the whole connecting. Nah, series. no, no. It's 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 real hard to complete. Some very common ones. Um, it's the beginning of the bat's very common. The last part that I found really hard to get hold of is the part where the barbed wire is round around the end of it and the blood's coming off. That's incredibly hard to get. Um, I haven't completed. I've won quite a, probably three or four auctions now in the states with um, like the Walking Dead stuff, and it's like massively collectible. And um, if you do have it, you do want to sell it. I mean, any time's a good time to sell it, Walking Dead, even though the show's finished. It's, it's held its value really well. I think it will for a long time to come. It's it's a uh... Well, it's even that, and this is this. The, um, there's those other covers, the Something to Fear covers. It's just black, half black. And it says Something to Fear on the bottom. It'll be like a dude with a machete, dude with a baseball bat. You and, know, and for an American comic, that's not in color as well, black yeah, and white. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah that's right. That's unusual in that's itself. Crazy. Very, and it's a very English style to it. Isn't well, it Charlie like... Adler, uh, Charlie Adler used to work for 2000 AD for mm. for years and years, yeah. and he's been the main writer since what issue 10 or something. Main like artist, quite yeah. early, quite like main artist. Sorry, yeah, yeah. quite early on, and it's. It's just got a really well. Even the cool origin war. of the Walking Dead, right? Like how how it actually got got even pitched, like with Robert Kirkman. Oh, that's hilarious. Yeah, so. it was good. Eh? Well, we listened to that, and it was like he. I don't know how he knew Eric Larson, but he's like Eric Larson needed to go to somewhere, and he was like, "I'll give you a lift to the airport." And so he's like, "Well, if I give him a lift to the airport, I don't really know where I'm going. So when I as I go my way there, I'll pitch this to him, and um, maybe he'll take it. Maybe he'll think, oh, this is a good concept, right?" He's like, oh, I've got this idea for a book, and it's like a zombie apocalypse, and there's only a few guys that survive, and all these characters, and there's this and this and this. And then Eric's like, oh, this, Eric Larson's like, this is not that bad. He's like, so he tells Jim Valentino, who was like kind of the guy who was yay or nay for Image at the time. So he was like, oh, okay. So he goes, oh, I'll put up a meeting for you with Jim Valentino, I think. This is not 100%, but that's what I remember. I had to do a few beers at the time, and I watched it, obviously. And um, he was like, yeah, hey, Jim, uh, um, sorry, hey, uh, Robert, come in, we'll have a talk about this idea you had. So he's like, yeah, no worries. So he's like, yeah, okay, um, what's your idea for this for this series? He's like, oh, it's a zombie apocalypse, and, you know, um, there's some really strong characters surviving, and there's, there's groups of people, and they've met other pockets of people, and they have conflicts, and blah, blah, blah. He's like, yeah, oh, man, nobody really, nobody's really into zombies. Like, it's... Pfft. He goes, oh, I didn't forgot to mention, it's not actually just zombies... The zombies are actually aliens, and the aliens are aliens coming out of Earth, and they're, they're actually the zombies. They don't know totally the alien invasion. Totally changed the story to try and get us interested. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, they're trying to come back, reel them in. Well, that's how good his imagination is, right? It's like, yeah, yeah, it's not actual zombies, though. They're actually aliens who are coming for an invasion, and they're going to take over. That's right, and he, so he said that yeah. in the hopes that if he ever had to do that, yeah. yeah, he could down the line, but he never wanted yeah. to, right? Yeah, yeah. the thing was, it would be so good anyway, people would just read did, it and go, Didn't he get pulled amazing. up, though, a few issues then? Oh, oh but, when these aliens appear. Yeah, yeah. I, think <laughs> was, I think it was like, a, after it was after 20, like after Michonne and everyone else sort of come along, it's like, it's like there's no sort of hint of these aliens turning up, eh? And he's like, oh, I'll tell you the truth, man, there's no aliens, it's just zombies, <laughs> apocalypse. And he's like, Oh man, but they were selling so well. I mean, oh, like, yeah. what do you do? You don't when you're making money. If you're a publisher and like the, the, cause it's selling well, you like you just don't pull it. You like oh, and he was a go, breath of fresh air for Image when Image yeah, was about really to was. fucking implode. Uh, they, they actually well, they, they punished the out. '90s, right? Like hard. Mm. same with the other co companies as well. They punished the '90s hard as well. Yeah, oh, it was um, but yeah, I got a lot of I've got a bit of that stock in lately. I've been lucky enough to win a few of those. Um, and it's all, seems to be at every auction you get at the moment um, overseas, it's always 98 through to about 110. Mm. Those covers, but there's so many variants on those covers. Like, I think Walking Dead 100, I don't know how many cover variants. Oh, it is, they do I a think lead it's in the 100s or something. I do they remember. do a lead up to 100, do they? Yeah, well, like, sort of go, it sort of goes 98. Because it's, a, I mean, for a comic, it's a big number, right? 100. Yeah. 
it's like so it goes 98 99 and 100 and it's like there's a heap of variant covers of 100 i think there's a heap of variant covers of 150 even it's a, it's a quite a lot i remember you um, about for a comic 10 or 20 oh, yeah. 100 I, I no, think, issue 100 is all different covers i don't even think that's that many i think there's i think there's i don't know Hadley, can you check that like i don't, i think it's like um <clears throat> i think it's might be more than a hundred variant covers or something. Ridiculous. Hundred variant. Covers. Oh, I'm I'm not sure. I mean, I, I could be making that, but I I think that um there could be a um an issue there with that for sure. What on here? Well, what does that say? It says nah, connection no, error. That's um Steam. That's um you, you and my daughter always fucking downloading Steam on everything. Quit it. Just quit out. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, I think yeah. there's I think there's a Walking Dead 100, the original 2000, um, is it three 2003 series? It's a lot of variant covers. I think it was, um, I think it was a lot even for that um, that era of comics, man. But yeah, they sell well. Well, people want them. People, it's like with any variants, you know. A lot of people hunt variants now. Mm. You can have the A cover. It was like, yeah, that's cool. It's the other A cover. Yeah, no worries. Oh, I actually want the other amount of variant covers, even if there's a one for fifty or one for one hundred. They want. I mean, you you got to be. If a Peach Momoko variant cover comes up, you're going to try and grab it, aren't you? Yeah, because, of, you know, yeah. it's just, yeah. there's certain people that just make a living on doing the variant covers. When you see that watercolor... And they go up immediately. When you see that watercolor cover, like Peach Momoko, and the drawing's pretty, it's pretty, it's pretty tight. You, you see it, you go, you just know it's her straight away. Oh, yeah. And her covers have gone through the roof. And now she's got her own series, right? Yeah, X-Men, uh, Demon Days. Mm. Um, stuff like that. She's actually got her own cover. She writes and she draws. Uh, you know, I picked incredible. that, I actually got that off you... I haven't read it yet. A few months ago, and I tried to read it. Well, not tried to read it. I started reading it today. Just mm. today. Mm. It's all right. Um, didn't grab me, grab me, but it's, 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 uh, the art's amazing. I was going to say, what's the art like? Yeah, yeah beautiful yeah. art, you know, very Peach Moko art, but just, I probably need a bit more. So, what is it? X Men Demon Day. So, is it yeah, got yeah. Some, is it, has it got some history, or is this this. No, I think it's, it might even be a brand new cover, as far as, I'm, as far as I know. Brand new kind um, of style. Yeah, yeah I, I don't know. Brand new X Men title. I don't know. Um, I just got it because it was Peach Momoko, and it was kind of that speculation market for me. Mm. And if I get that, and I get enough variants of it, there, there can be money in it. Because it's set in, um, you know, Japan and Is ancient it? times. Okay. Feudal Japan. Feudal right? Japan. Yeah. Um, very uh, Japanese mythology and stuff mm. in the background. Um, but then I sort of just got glimpses of characters like the Hulk's kind of in it. Oh, uh, yeah. Do you remember that um, that Marvel 1666? Oh, 1662. 1662, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 It, was, it was kind of... Neil, it Gaiman, was all, Neil Gaiman. Right? Yeah, and it was yeah, all yeah. based on um, characters that were set, in, set back in the Middle Ages, yeah. and, which I, I actually really enjoyed that. Which was awesome, because yeah. you don't even... Spider Man doesn't even know he's Spider Man's like the last freaking book and about the last page, I think. Oh, he doesn't get bitten the whole time, yeah. he was. Yeah. yeah, that's right. He was just a little, um, he was just a little uh, sidekick, yeah. Peter Parker. Yeah. And every time he's about to get bitten by a spider, or well, somebody else squashes it yeah. or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a good cut. Co- I mean, I really liked it. I it liked was a good it. Concept. Was a good he had to struggle the whole time. Then he got bitten by a spider on the last page or like the second last page. Or See, I need to get a bit, um, I need to do a bit of research on what this, um, Peach Maker one is before I carry on because I, d- I just thought it was a, a standalone kind of thing. Oh, these multiple copies. It's probably a probably a five or six part series. Mm. Um, yeah, in that respect. Um, so I'll oh, we'll move on to something else. Um, I've got um, yeah some st- some interesting stocks coming and something about Silver Age in, in New Zealand. It's not super hard to get, but it is hard to get in some respects. Like um, what I've come across some world's finest which i did put up on facebook and it's i don't know why it is i i do collect um silver rage myself but i think it is good to collect good to um catch up with it in the uh you know when you're selling it silver rage sells uh in new zealand okay you can't get as much as you get probably in america for it but silver rage covers man they just grab me every time they tell you a story on the front page and like Vaughan has alluded to um that's not what's in the comic <laughs> A lot of the time, you know. I mean, this one here has got the Joker and Lex Luthor on the front. And it's 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 Superman going, oh, sock it to him, Luthor. Luthor, baby. Gun down that cringing, oh, that grinning gargoyle. And there's Batman there and he's supporting Joker. And he's like, yeah, blast that bull bandit Joker. I'm with you. They're just a really good cover. They're not, I mean, for the day, it was probably really well drawn. 
Um, these days we kind of expect a bit more because you know, there's, there's a real industry in, in artwork itself. But that is hilarious. So hearing um, Superman use the word baby, you know. Yeah, <laughs> you all know. It reminds me of actually 2008, but with giant, they, Judge Giant. They almost look like single panels that have been yeah. blown up. Like the the composition, um, like gives you a lot of space to fill in with word bubbles because they all have word bubbles on them. Someone's oh. saying something, and most of the time they're shouting. Yeah, yeah, yeah they're, they're, going, they're going off, right? Yeah. And, and the, the cool thing about Silver Age too is that they're such bold covers. They're like, we need to catch that. Really. Like, I don't know whether it's a thing because they started in the 40s and 50s, a lot of them. They go, we need something so yeah. hard-hitting. We need to really capture someone's imagination. It's like... So what do you got there? you got World's Finest number... 178. What year is that? Um, it's 63 or something like that. Nine, okay, I can't so remember early, off top of my head. Early 60s yep. kind of thing. And this one here is one of my favourites. So it's, it's, it's Superman holding Batman above his head. He's like, yeah, I'm about to commit my first crime. And you, Batman, are my first, are my first victim. He's about to throw him off a building. And uh, Batman, not obviously having superpowers, is... Um, yeah, well, what's this though? Featuring the imaginary epic they dared us to print. <laughs> Superman's yeah, perfect crime. Oh, so this is like a what if or something. <laughs> It's not a what up, but that that soup that silver rage for you. They capture you with the front page. They give you a story on the front page. Yeah, and then that's they, it. And they, they, they do something else in the internal. They weren't terribly concerned about continuity. No, 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 no. no. not on the there anything no flies. <laughs> yeah, um, one of my favorite ones was the one where Robin got a broken arm and he had to wear a sling. So to counter it, Batman wore a really elaborate costume. I've, if I if I remember correctly, it was like a rainbow costume, a version of his costume. Nice. So that he would draw the attention to him, <laughs> but not under Robin's broken arm. So there wouldn't be that Achilles heel for Robin where people attack his freaking arm. <laughs> <laughs> but like, that, that, Wait, just, <laughs> that, that sums up Silver Age. Yeah. Uh, but that, I mean, that stock, that Walking Dead stock I talk about is good. That stock is awesome. Something else I did come into, which I already want to talk about, and I think Hadley appreciated it too, is this, um, with a load of 2008Es, um, from my good friend Jeremy at Arkham Comics, um, Battle Action Force. Um, and it does star a lot of G.I. Joe characters. You know, um, same format as the original um, 2000 AD stuff, and I haven't read them, honestly. But um, came out the same format, but it's just real. It's, it's like Battle, eh? the original uh, version of Battle or 2000 AD. They capture you on the front page, same as Silver Age stuff with. A smash start to maximum kill. Subway disaster. And there's people strewn everywhere. This fire. <laughs> a train smashed to pieces. Cobra Commander has an actual Cobra tied around, uh, basically around his neck. Wrapped around his I neck. I mean, I mean, if this has come out in 1980, this one. Oh, sorry, 1986. So, you know, nearly at the height of G.I. Joe popularity. And and to support their characters, it's like, you have this max. I mean, you, how can you not sell action figures? It's amazing, isn't it? And I have got a lot of them. I think I've only got like a half a dozen. What number is that one? Um, this <coughs> one's twenty uh, seventh of the year. It doesn't really have a number. It's dated. Oh, it'll right. Be dated, yeah. It'll yeah. Be, uh... Actually, this is, I don't actually see it. Uh, some ones are just dated though. Even though, like action, you know, action, action. Um, back in the day, worn stuff like that. They would yeah. just have a d date on them. Um, what I find really interesting is I don't know whether it's the the pulpy paper or just the squareness of the the um, the print, but. It looks like a like a Sunday newspaper. Yes, it really does. <clears throat> and it, it, but it, also the way the whole front page is laid out, like like this is a real thing that's happened. Oh yeah, here's a photo. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Actually, I do see what you're saying. It does look like a like an actual newspaper. Yeah. <laughs> the, the Sunday Herald's been delivered in your bloody yeah, yeah. Um, letterbox. <laughs> This is, um, this is but the, this, this is, is new world type stuff. This it? is yeah. the standard. And, uh, 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 my my husband was impregnated by an alien or something. Yeah. Like that. What was it the Sun it. or the the Sunday Star? Well, there was the, there was the World News or something. And in Britain they have it, and it's like it comes as like, oh, I was abducted by an alien. Oh, now I'm an alien's four. baby. But see, <laughs> Joe Two Beans. Yeah, I mean, and, and it has like proper commando style stories in it. Then all of a sudden it has G.I. Joe, which was Battle... Uh, sorry, Action Force, wasn't it? Or Battle the thing Force. is... Yeah. Action Force. Is that, uh, and then it has in Charlie the UK, War. In the UK, they're so lucky. They've got this as a weekly... Yeah, they've yeah. got 2000 AD, they've got Battle Action Force, they've got Wizard and Chips, they've got all these things that are coming as a weekly... Oh, you weekly. missed one, Oink. Um, <laughs> was it Oink weekly? Uh, weekly? I think it was. From memory. Shouldn't be. But. I beg your pardon. Um, <laughs> but anyway, it, and, and it is on. It is on newspaper print, isn't it? 
It's amazing that how good a condition this is in. I'll tell you what, is, if, you, if you're, this is garbage if paper. You, you know, like, for me, if when I sell it on 2080s, you know that on that paper, it's awesome. Because it, you can go to someone and go, what condition? You go, well, this page is still white. Oh, has it got any um, wrinkles or cranks in the spine? You go, it's 2000 AD, mate. And obviously, back it's made out of newsprint. It's got yeah. no crinkles. I mean, it doesn't <laughs> crank. You're going to just iron that out with a, a with a bloody iron, and it's done. Exactly. That's how good they are, and they still read well, and the, and the art still stays, and the ink's still good. It's not like a, a Silver Age comic where like the the paper's so flashy on the front to make it look awesome that it actually the staples come away. Also, that's a weekly thing. Kids didn't keep these. Mm. They read you know, them. They read them. Thrashed and they, them. They, yeah. They'd be handed down a lot. They got given away like um. A lot of 2000 ADs used to do similar sort of thing to this, is it? And they're just not designed to keep or collect, so to see them in good nick is good. This is a, one of my all time favorite Charlie's War stories in here. Charlie's War, I love that. Fucking I don't really remember that though, Vaughn, because that's, that's this some, is a bit later on, I'd yeah. Say. I think it is because it's on the on the ocean and shit like that. Mm. I mean, it's a fucking steam pedal boat. What the flip? Are you kidding <laughs> me? What was this? The, the, the Civil War. <laughs> Um, but it is quite interesting because battle being would have been a separate thing, yeah. and then action forces come along, and they're just going, "Well, it's battle and, and action force now," and action force is just the English version of GI Joe, is yeah, it? Yeah, right in the middle. Well, I don't know, but Hadley will definitely confirm that. I imagine action forces GI Joe, right? Yeah, it got licensed UK. out to the UK mm. under a different name to a different company. They did their own thing. Just like Transformers did as well, they had their own storylines. Oh, Action Force, Joe. There's the one in there with that ridiculous um, skull spaceship. Fucking. <laughs> oh yeah, 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 yeah. It looks yeah. amazing. It looks like a Tie Fighter with a giant skull. Yeah, on it's it. horrendous. Destro yeah. <coughs> <coughs> <Destroyed> looks <laughs> awesome in this. And, you know, some of the characters were the same, and then they would make new versions or rename characters yeah. or they, that type didn't of thing they mix or... up the colours a bit? Yeah, put a lot of red on them. A lot and... of red and black. That's bad boy. Yeah, boy. Snow job. That's an unfortunate um, name, but uh, that's all good. But yeah, I mean, the cover's like, if you're a kid and you saw that cover, right? You want snow job on it, you're like, holy... Stop saying snow job, you weirdo. <laughs> everyone, everyone loves a good snow job, what? Um, amazing. Then you got this red skull weird I'm tie fighter. Time so I can edit that out. <laughs> <laughs> I will destroy Action Force. It's a dude, who's that dude? Um... Baron Ironblood. Well, there you go. Don't you mean Ned Kelly? <laughs> That's what I was going to say. <laughs> Look at the state of it. I know. Just but a big iron. If you're a, if you're a, a on a head. If you're a kid, I mean, nothing such you more than um, dudes with machine guns and cobras. I mean, it's freaking awesome. I mean, oh, another one with the ridiculous robot. I actually skull. did have hey, some of these. Look at hey, that. I remember Firefly. I, I remember yep. some of these um, <clears throat> editions because of that poster right at the back there. Don't ever That's a one. great poster. You say Siege Soldier? Awesome. Let me touch it. Blood for Cobra. I mean, all these, all these, pa like, I mean, look at that one there. Back page posters are amazing. The Kraken. Amazing. Strike from the sea. But you can't, you can't beat it. There's a, what's his name? Navy guy. Gung ho. But. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to get all the details right. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, when I saw those in with the 2080s, I, I was like, my eyes lit up a little bit. I didn't let Jeremy see it just because he was like trying to charge me too much. I'm like, whoa. This action force was pretty sweet, actually. You know what? I don't think Jeremy would give a shit. No, he was like, I can get them out of my shop, thanks. I don't want trash <laughs> in the shop. I'm like, um, okay, cool. But yeah, what I mean... What are all these doing in the bin? I'll take those. <laughs> <laughs> this is expensive toilet paper. Um, but yeah, you get these... It's things like that you come across with your stock and you're like... You know, I mean, not it's not for everyone. And it is hard to sell 2000 AD, I have found, obviously. But people are pretty hardcore on it, and they will contact you. They'll actually search you out. And over the last couple of months, I've had um, a few guys try to complete their um, zero, uh, you know, one to one to one thousand, and they've come to me and, and got some on stuff. On the two thousand ADs. Yeah, yeah. And I've been lucky enough to be able to get no worries and sell it to them. Um, but yeah, just they're just striking covers. I just like them. I mean, most two thousand AD covers are pretty striking anyway, with the art on them. Uh, the pre five twenties. I must have come. I do remember some of these, and I have come across these in the past because I, I, I read a lot of UK sort of comics. But it's funny how I just don't remember that much of the GI Joe or the um, the Action Force being in this comic. It's, and that is ex that at the back here. Destro is exactly the same. Cobra Commander is exactly the same, and then. Everything else has kind of been changed just a little bit. It's interesting. 
Do you remember Woods Kids though? When you yep. were a kid? Yeah, yeah. I used to love that. I remember they fucking um they had these computers going in the in one of the they ride around the BMXs, do a little fucking skid, they press a um, button on a computer and it um, takes about twenty four hours to decipher some hieroglyphics from Egypt. Oh. Fuck it was rad. So you're talking about Dan Brown's um book uh. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about if that's Dan Brown's book he would have fucking always went oh can you um, decipher these hieroglyphics yep go to the museum okay done Ooh. that's right. what they did Next anyway one. yeah that's, that's what they do. do they fucking just go yeah. straight into something else. oh this is an insolvable puzzle hey wait a second what if I do Hey, this is based on a fucking Rubik's ancient... Cube <laughs> Rubik's Cube yeah oh done right, let's go to the next yeah. mystery Oh gosh, we national treasure over that fucking Nicolas Cage. Oh, I actually like that movie. Do you, I, yeah, I can watch. I can actually watch that. Do you know what one I, I like? Which, I, yeah. You know which one I like, which you hate. What? Come on here. Come on here. And the other one I like is Gone in sixty seconds. I love that one. Like how? No, Gone in sixty seconds. I love it. Probably the original one's probably not bad, but fuck, it got a bit ridiculous <laughs> after that. Jesus. Well, there's only one. Gone in 60 seconds. Yeah, it's one movie. There's not two. Oh, which one's Gone in 60 seconds? You're thinking seconds? Fast and Furious. Yeah, that is what I'm thinking That's of. horrendous. Yeah. That's like Frankie Ball said. Uh, any country that makes more than one Fast and the Furious movie should never have a, la- a, um, a say which in anything globally. Which one's Gone in 60 seconds? It's one with Nicholas Cage where steals that um, Mustang called uh, Lucille or something oh, like that. Oh, Lucille. Lucille. Um, it's not, is it Lucille? Oh, yeah, yeah. no. It's, no. Uh, to me, they're two the same. those movies are exactly the same. Like, fast and Furious and um, Gone in 60 seconds are both fucking... To me, it is stupid. Yuck. Yuck. Stupid. Don't talk to me. Yuck. (laughs) No mention of Point Break, though. I love Point Break. I love Point Break. (laughs) Amazing movie. I do love Point Break, yeah. Uh, Right. What are you going to do? You're going to do this! Come on! (laughs) You're going to swim to New Zealand? (laughs) And he shot his gun in the air because he loved him so much. (laughs) 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 I love that on, um, uh, not Hot Shots, what's it called? Hot Fuzz. Fuzz. He goes... And it was he shooting his pistol in the air? Because he loves him so much. He can't shoot him in the back because yeah, he yeah. loves him so much. Yeah, so shoots it in the air. Let's jump out of the fucking plane without uh, without a parachute. All right. Fuck mm-hmm. that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I mean, that's where I, I would have ducked out way before that. When I was surfing, I was like, oh, I'm shit at surfing, so this is not going to be good. <laughs> 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 Who's the fat white guy? <laughs> Who's his point Dexter mate on the beach? Red as a beetroot. You're doing amazing, Bram! <laughs> <laughs> like, that's like, hang hey, ten! <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake, mate. I think they're the baddies. Yeah. I'm going to talk to them, all right? You always want to buy some drugs? <laughs> <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> Get rid of these two points. <laughs> 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 uh, right. Um, another thing I've been... Uh, oh, straight into it. Yeah. <laughs> 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 well, yeah, I mean, I mean, it's, this is new for me, but it's something I'm, I'm, I'm quite excited about is, um, is Pokemon cards because I've always thought, nah, I've never been into Pokemon, and but my daughter, was, uh, my my middle daughter's always been into it, and she's always collected cards. Then my youngest daughter's been hardcore into the cards, and they've always got the fake ones you get from um, certain shops, so they like a dollar for a booster pack, and it's covered in um, it's covered in a bag that you'd be fine to probably properly. Um, <laughs> But yeah, I mean, it's something I've just started getting into, and it's like, it's it's actually sort of like a booster pack. When you open them with your with your kids, like my daughter, when we open them together, it's really cool just to compare. It's really cool just to go, okay, the first four, one, two, three, four, put them on the bottom, and the next one's an energy card, and you guess them together. You're like, oh, what energy card you got? Oh, it's a, it's it's you know, grass type or it's. Uh, steel or whatever and, and you guess them and it's just fun and then you just oh, go through your cards and most of the packs honestly are just straight garbage for me um i go for the full art or the want v or the v max cards like stuff like that or rares rainbow rares stuff like this on certain packs and it's exciting man i really like it i'm starting to get into it and um i haven't done it for a lot for a while but what i have decided is for, for myself um at fitty anger is to actually kids down here can't collect because there is nowhere that sells original cards the warehouse did for a while, but they would sell out like in one day, boom, 30 packs gone, you know. Do so, you think to one person? Or? Oh, I, I, I mean, there's speculators there, man. I mean, people on Facebook pages will tell you, people will just go and ruin it for everyone. There's no way a kid can collect Pokemon anymore. I mean, there was a big lull in it where no one was collecting it, and they were still being pumped into mm. New Zealand. But there's, there's, it's come back, it's pretty strong now. So I've, I've looked at doing it, and I really want to get... um. 
some some you know uh, booster boxes here, some booster packs, mm. so I can sell them myself even um, on the weekends. When I, I can open up the weekend, say Saturday, and have kids come and buy them here. I won't try to profiteer the shit out of it, but I will want to try and make some money off it. Otherwise, what's the point, right? But um, I sort of got into that. I, I don't remember Pokemon that well, actually. Like from the late nineties, was it late nineties, Hadley? I don't know. But there did, was you, a, did you ever click them, um, Hadley? No, it was um, Pokemon for me. It was kind of like Dragon Ball Z. I skirted around yeah. it. I, I watched like some of the Z. some of the shows, yep. some of the episodes, but I never really bought have any watched, toys. Have you or watched some of the anything? episodes? They were harsh, man. Misty with their little um, side actually just kicked the shit out of them. There's some really weird Japanese stuff going yeah. on relationship wise across like <laughs> all those all those stories. But yeah, not really anything. I mean. It would have been mid '90s here, mm. um, maybe late at the most. But yeah. like, it's just you know, it's part of your cultural zeitgeist at the time. You kind of know about it, mm. even if you don't need to know everything about yeah. it. You you know, you just I can it. imagine because it was quite. It was on every single day when in the mid '90s, like you say. So people that growing up around that time must have quite strong nostalgic yeah. sort of feelings to yeah, it. I never really watched it. Every time it was on, yeah. You know, to be honest, if it was on, sometimes and it just came up, and I was too lazy to find the remote. Yeah, I'd watch it till the end. Oh, um, I'll tell you what. I had no idea what was going on. It, it was um, it was quite. It's actually quite comical now as I watch it as an adult. You know, I'm like, it's actually really comical. I watch it with my daughter, and, I, and I'm just like, it's actually really, it's actually quite. I mean, yeah, it's amusing. You can not turn away from it. I watched Detective Pikachu, man. I thought it was actually pretty awesome. I'm pleased you keep to referencing your daughter on this because you. Oh no, no, I liked it myself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm like, get, I'm like, get the fuck out of the way of the screen, you silly cow! I'm trying to watch the freaking Detective Pikachu. What the hell is Detective Pikachu? Is oh, it was just a, it was a movie that came out. It was really cool. It had Mewtwo in it. Mewtwo oh, was that, awesome. Oh, is it a Mewtwo movie? was actually oh, really okay. awesome. But, <laughs> but, but um, it, it was actually really awesome. But I'll tell you my first, my first. Turn that kill off. <laughs> the bloody dishwasher. <laughs> um, oh, listen. <laughs> They did a really smart thing with Detective Pikachu because they it was Pikachu, but it wasn't Pikachu. Mm. It was a oh, really? version of it was a Pikachu who was also a detective. So the smart mm. thing is that it, it was nothing to do with fucking Pokemon. Well, it it was in the world, but it wasn't the same Pikachu that you grew up with. Yeah, like, but it was a version with of Ash, Pikachu, yeah. Okay. Yeah. and it was uh, Ryan Reynolds did his voice. Yeah, oh, okay. Most humans could only ever hear him saying. Pikachu, Pikachu, yeah, yeah. Pikachu. Yeah, the yeah, main yeah. character can hear what he's actually saying, oh. and it's Ryan Reynolds just running yeah. his mouth. Yeah, which is all good because I love Deadpool. Yeah, for me. But then they so they live in a in a city in a world where there are Pikachu just wandering yeah. around, and they they have a mystery. Yeah. So somebody doesn't didn't watch Pikachu a lot. You seem to know a lot about this. Well, my fingers on the pulse. I'll right tell you why. <laughs> I'll tell you why. Uh, I'll tell you why. It's, um the first my <laughs> first introduction with to Pokemon was when I was in the army, and this will sound weird. It do, and, uh, that's a good, it that's does a good your way honor. to start yeah. it. And so, uh, we, we sometimes had a lot of downtime. And when we deployed overseas, there was a lot of downtime. So a lot of people bought Nintendos. This is definitely the New Zealand Army then. <laughs> yep. And so there was like um, Pokemon Gold and Pokemon Blue and Pokemon whatever it was. And you could play on a Nintendo, but at the time obviously you had a cable. You had to be hardwired to the guy and you could battle each other oh, yeah. and stuff like this. And it was massively popular. I didn't get into it. I, I played Super Mario, um, Super Wario, actually. And um, but they would get into a hard hour, and they were a bit younger than me. I think at the time I, um, they would be five years younger than me. But mm. they they were into it hardcore. I knew how to do it. And they had the cable and they battle each other huh. on there, and they were into it hardcore. I was like, I couldn't get into it. But I watched them play and stuff like that because you know there's nothing else to do. But um, that was my first introduction to it, the Nintendo, and I think that is. I think that is what Pokemon's based on, right? Um, the cards. It's Nintendo actually owned Pokemon, as far as I can tell. The funny thing was when you started saying, telling me that um, you were starting to get some Pokemon cards in, you're going through them, and it, it must be fun with you and your daughter to actually go through and open packs and just go, oh, this is a good one. This no, I wish she wasn't really wrecking it for me. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly. But um, I remember then I had to I want the one she's got. For some weird reason, I got stuck on the um, watching these guys unpackage them on YouTube. That's or, weird. All day long. Leon Hart, who's really famous, he's like the most famous dude I know on on YouTube. He has like first edition Pokemon packs. He's dude, paid like fifty grand. Yeah, for a, a shit massive amount of money. I've gone oh. to this thing of just watching these guys unpacking these original mm. Pokemon cards all yeah. day long. <coughs> it was it was. I don't know why I found it quite therapeutic seeing them, and then they just freak out. Like oh, he flipped out like an American flips out. Oh yeah, yeah, when they when they get something really rare. 
And one of the most interesting things I saw on there was that he actually sent away a hundred thousand dollar card to get graded, and it never turned up to the grading thing. And it was um, lost for about a year. Oh, you told me that. Yeah, it lost was a year, and then eventually, like a year later, and he'd totally given up on the that yeah. he was going to ever get there. He got an email saying, oh, yeah, we've got your card here. We'll give that grading, and we'll give that." And he's just going, "Oh my god, I can't believe wow. this." That amount of time, mate. Got it Fuck. back, and it actually came back with a little less quality than what he thought. But for some reason, I got hooked on watching these videos. Well, there was a there was a guy who was on Porn Stars ages ago. Like, I mean, uh, P A W N. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. P O P A W N, <laughs> not P O R N. Um, yeah, they there was a guy there, and he's well known anyway in the Pokemon community in America, and he has some of the. Um, I saw it. Yeah. I think he has ten or twelve of of fourteen graded. Charizards, and I think the worth on it was three hundred twenty-five thousand on those at the time. Mm. I tell you what, they'll be worth they'll be worth way more now. I mean, Logan Paul. I don't know if we talked about this last time, but they got Logan Paul and he had the fight. He wore a a, a Charizard on a, on a cha- big gold chain, mm. and it was I think it was worth a substantial amount of money. It could be hundreds of thousands of dollars. I don't know, but it was worth quite a bit of money at the time. Well, that guy had ten of them or ten or twelve of them at the time. Yeah, he had the he had the world market <coughs> for graded. First edition Charizard. Yeah. So imagine what that guy had now. If he, he he did keep them in the end. He never sold it to those guys. What makes them so rare? I, I would have assumed. I, don't know. I would have assumed I think, be pumped out at the same rate no, well, as what a lot of other yeah, cards. Yeah, probably are. was. But I think the thing was at the time it was a, it was a card game. People yeah. physically played it. I played the online version of it, which is actually really enjoyable. Um, just from a gaming perspective, it's actually really enjoyable for me online. I, I prefer to keep the cards as they are, the ones that I like, and that's how, I mean, that's how I collect, I don't collect things I like, I don't collect things which are necessarily collectible, like, I don't do an entire series, mm. I wouldn't never try to complete that, because it's a fortune, but I, I would open random packs, if I get a V, or a V Max, or a Full Art, or a Rainbow Rare, or whatever, I would, I would keep those, <coughs> and um, I don't necessarily know the proper value of them, but I do have an app that sort of tells you a general, you know, guide to it, but of late, I've just got into getting a few graded ones, because, um, I've had people paying me on Trade Me New Zealand, which is not if everyone uh, is listening to it's from New Zealand, but Trade Me, a lot of people can pay in ping. And so with ping payments, I'll, I'll don't cash it out. I'll just use it to buy stuff that I want. So I say comics, or I, I, I just got captured by graded Pokemon cards. I'm like, I don't think they'll be worth a lot now, um, necessarily, but I think, um, you know, in say 10 to 15 years time, with that sort of vision, I think they will be, you know? Because um, a lot of people do play it, it's still very competitive. I do belong to a group on uh, Facebook, um, um, Pokemon TCG New Zealand, which is a re- really cool group, and um, some some very very uh, good information on there. Um, Who's that Kiwi fellow that unwraps some? Um, um, there's a few of them. There, yeah. There's a few people that do it on Instagram, mm-hmm. and um, I don't know about YouTube. I oh, probably on YouTube as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, I just collect for myself, so it's not really a, a big issue. But um, why? So you've got a few here. You got um, some. I don't know. I'll be honest. I don't know why I got these graded cards. I just got them, and they didn't. They didn't seem bad value to me because I've collected graded comics for so long. Yeah. Um, <coughs> they didn't seem bad value to me. They're half the value of a graded comic. Uh, I mean. So yeah, I, I don't know. Take up, take up less space. Well, um, yeah, and, and I think they're, they're just um, they're kind of like that weird thing with people when they go to retro market. So you're one here, go, Psychic Club, nine point five. It's complete. It's like a CGC yeah. comic. It looks amazing, and they're graded the same like way. That. So nine point five, Jim so Mint, Jim Mint. Yeah, really nicely done. Where are these um, graded? In America or uh, in Australia? Australia. In Australia, those ones. Um, CGA is in Australia um, for our region. So yeah. See, it's interesting. I remember at high school. Um, we used to go to our local card crazy. Yeah. And, <clears throat> you know, they had Pokemon cards, but yep. being, you know, very active and cool uh, teenage boys who were like, nah, don't don't get those ones. I want the basketball cards. Just case the girls listening, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, I heard you going to get some Pokemon cards on oh, no, a... No, NBA <laughs> cards. I'm looking for that rookie, Alan yeah. Um <clears throat> So, like, NBA cards or, like, Spider-Man cards, X-Men cards, the Marvel, Flares, Tops, that sort of stuff was, you know, real real peak. Oh, hold on. X-Men, an X-Men card is cooler than a Pokemon card. Oh, I don't yeah. think so. <laughs> <laughs> It certainly was. Oh come on! Until now. <laughs> until the prices of all the Pokemon cards went like 
through yeah, the roof. Through the well, roof, there's a guy who <laughs> the guy who collects, and he was on actually on the on the news as Chris Chen, and um, I'm not sure where he's situated at, but he spent a lot of time collecting. Man, he's got an amazing collection, and he does sell a lot of stuff, and he's a good seller too. Um, here's some stuff that you just never find, and he was hardcore from the day dot I think when they were released until now, and and now he's starting to really I wouldn't say cash in. But now he's he's getting what he deserves. He punished himself through the eras when no one was collecting Pokemon. No, no one was trading yeah. Pokemon. And he's, and he's stuck with it. Um, same as comics, right? If you collect the comics from the nineties, going, well, oh, I put my kid through um, thing with Death of Superman or something crap. Excuse me. And um, now you come into fruition. It's like, yeah. like an X Force One now. Like they literally only how long ago? Like three, four years ago, you pick one up for five bucks. Okay, it's not a huge increase, but twenty five bucks for an X Force One yeah. polybagged. It's like, I think I sold a set of four with four cards polybagged. I think I only set up for like um, 80 bucks. And I thought that was what a ridiculous amount now? of money. I don't know, but they're at least 25 bucks a piece now instead of five bucks a piece, yeah, you know? Yeah. Um, and that's just how it is. It's like, if you if you can, if you have the money to do it and you can just bank that shit and have a job and just bank it, bank it, bank it, keep it, keep it, keep it, keep it and you go through it. I, I am you, amazed you at can. how these Pokemon cards oh. have how they're valued <laughs> and gone up in value. Like you say, I think I know that Bram used to collect um, basketball cards. I remember yeah, you I had do. quite a few. Um, I have sold them for next to nothing. I've still got a few left, but because they, never, they never really went up, do they? And yeah. They didn't hold the value like anything like this. This is just Well, it's like when the when, when Chicago money. Bulls were in their full prime, I've got Topps Chicago Bulls cards. Actually, I've got Topps Lakers um, cards um, from 1991. They're not worth anything, man. You know what? I They're worth something to someone who loves them. Yeah. And I'm trying to find someone, and I would just give it to them because I'm, I'm like, I don't, I want to hold on to them, but I can't just keep holding these cards and then, yeah, and then try and dump them. <coughs> or so one of the one of the, um, you know? the the basketball cards that has gone up in value in the last few years isn't because of the player that's on there. I don't even know who the player was. It's because it had the Menendez brothers in the background. Yes, <laughs> nice. I remember, I remember exactly <laughs> the one you're two, talking the about. Two, the two killers. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, just after they'd killed their parents. I, I watched and, um, them. I watched, they were actually in the background yeah. of this basketball It was card. on Generation Y. That oh, was, was it? Yeah, that, yeah. that documentary told you to watch the podcast yeah, yeah, and they yeah. were saying, yeah, they actually, they're pop culture because they actually increased a card, baseball card, mm. because these guys went to a match after they killed their parents. Yeah. And they and were in the background. As twin yeah. brothers in the background, Together. quite clearly, yep. while the guy's going like this. Yeah. And then you can see these yep. two serial killers. Mm. Oh, it was two. baseball or basketball? It was probably basketball. basketball. Sorry, it's in LA. Did I say baseball, did I? Uh, I think it's in LA. It was, yeah, so it was, it was going to be Lakers. I'm pretty sure it was yeah, yeah. basketball, yeah. And, yep. they got, and they were just right on yep. the front row. And they were right there, man, because they had money. They weren't going to buy a shitty seat, were they? I mean, far out. So that's, and, um, that, that's worth money, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, absolutely it is. I've recently seen quite a few lunatic. Um, trading card series, particularly basketball cards um, that feature signed, yeah, okay, the signed chase cards. Yeah, I've seen a few videos and a few clips and read a, bit, a few articles. <clears throat> so naturally, that means I'm an expert now. Um, <laughs> Same as me. Of um, <laughs> yeah, like the rate of return that you can get off. You know, if you oh, were to yeah. buy a box and hit one of these cards, um, yeah, just the the. Your investment and your return is just going to yeah. be massive. Well, it's kind of like these, even these new cards. I mean, Chilling Rain's been a bit of a failure as far as I'm concerned, but like um, Vivid Voltage was big. Like, you can get a, so you get a pack at eight bucks. EB Games, the standard is seven ninety nine, eight bucks. So you get a Vivid Voltage card and it's like a V or V. Do these Pokemons again? Yep, so you get V or V Max on it. So that one card might be, I mean, now might be worth, say, 20 bucks, 25 bucks. So you make the return on it, but you might, say you buy a whole booster box that's 36 packs, you might only get four or five in there, so you don't pay for the whole lot. But if you're collecting the whole series, that, that helps, right? And, and it does it does return a profit at some stage, you know? Because other people are going to want to complete their packs too, you know? So so going in, do you mm. know or no, do they you, release... No. Well, well, I mean, do they release a percentage numbers of one and X number of packets? No, Could you I get don't one? think. Well, they may do. I don't know enough about it. I mean, people may know. Um, they do. There was a thing back in the day that I've read online. And Leon Hart even talks about it on his YouTube channel. Is that weighted packs? So you knew you had a good pack if you weighed the pack yep. and you went, "Ooh, <clears> it's, <throat> it's a, a couple of grams heavier than normal." You knew you had a full art card, or whatever. You know what I mean. Yeah. I don't. I don't know enough about the older cards. I'm only I've just started collecting like a year ago. But um, there is a thing. If you weigh them, and then there's a 
I, I imagine it's the same with every card. And that was the thing. Remember on um, Comic Palace? Yeah, that's what I was, was thinking like, where that got squeezing in. like, stop touching them, mate. Stop touching them. Just choose one. Because of the thickness and everything. Mm. Because um, <laughs> even with the Marvel cards, they're really expensive. I can't remember what they're called now, but um, a friend of mine, Jeff Benitez, he does the full art print cards for Marvel. Not so much now, but back in the day, the DC and Marvel. And they'll do an artist um, sketch card. And it was a one in however many. And if you got one, that one card might be worth $200 US mm. in that pack. Mm. But if you go through the, and you get the packs, you go, oh, it's thicker than that one. Oh, I'll get that one. And that's what they would do. People mm. would go through and, and, and feel out the packs, you know? And it was a big thing for a long time. The first time I came across <coughs> that weighted <coughs> technique yep. was um, WWE Blind Bag. Cards. Oh. No, no, it was Blind Bag like um, Star Wars models. Oh, so yeah. like the Japanese okay. style okay. blind box. Yep. Someone had weighed and catalogued all yep. these different versions in the set in the box. So you knew so what, you, which one was. And yeah, and, yeah, and it w- I was actually at a store where they're like, "Oh, that one's that one because we know it's." Oh, so, oh, so they oh, sold it. Right. They sold it. They as sold they it were. as the product. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, it's actually better for everyone. Yeah, and that's that's exactly what I thought. I was like, yeah. "That's a good." Yeah. I don't want to buy twelve to get. Yeah, well, the, <laughs> the one is, I'm after. Well, the thing is, well, the shop can go. Oh, well, that's thirty dollars. How come? Because it's fucking that one. That's right. Yeah, and this yeah. is twelve dollars over here, and you know, so it really does streamline the whole thing. That's good. Yeah, it really does. And so, yeah, it's so at the moment. I've, I'm into Pokemon, and I've, I've um, I did sell it quite a lot. Even those little retro events. A guy came up to me and said, "I had all more ones I had spare." You know, and I'm like, "Yeah, I don't want these, man. I want someone to get take them." I said, "They're worth nothing sitting in my house." And the dude came to me. And he, I think I had like 600 cards in there and he was like oh man I love this I love the art on them you know because I'm an artist so I draw them and stuff like this I said bro just how much have you got tell me how much you want to pay for it and it was like 600 oh, it was a lot of cards man there's so many cards he goes I've got $22 I mean it's yours for 22 true Pokemon cards yep and he's yeah. like cool man I was like I was happy okay I got 22 bucks back it wasn't as much as I invested in what I had but I had some amazing <coughs> cards out of those packs yeah, yeah, yeah it wasn't like I lost out I mean mm. and what he, are you going to and he didn't exactly it, yeah. win because he got heaps of commons that most of them are the same it's like but he was happy man it's like that's the part of that pop culture that you, you forget about it's like someone gets something they want you get some return on stuff that you've not necessarily lost on but you don't want those ones you just want to get rid of them right so same as comic collecting, you know, when you buy bulk lots of stuff, you quite often get end up with a heap oh, of the same Oh, absolutely. You've got, you got to cherry pick out what you want and then just yeah. um, try and... You can't hold on to everything. No, you can't. Oh, I'm just pleased that you feel safe enough around us to confess that you're collecting this garbage. Oh, I think it's amazing. I don't really care. <laughs> I mean, if I care... I'm like, I mean, if I, care, if I cared what people thought about me, I, I wouldn't look like I look. Um... Boy, you can change that. <laughs> you can change the way you look. Why shave. haven't you done that I years could, ago? I could shave and wash. <laughs> <laughs> There's two things I could do, Vaughn, in your face. <laughs> right, right, let's move on to something else. Vaughn, what have you been reading that um, you're interested in and you think other people might? Well, you know that I've Well, I know you're a sociopath, so that'll that's be That's unfair and not true. But... Bunny mask. Bunny mask, right number here. one. You actually got this in for me because we always go through and have a little look at what's coming out, in and America, I, I always yeah. enjoy a, a number one. And I tell you what, if anyone out there is scared about ordering from America, so, or oh, how long's it take to get delivered because of COVID, blah blah blah, I tell you what, this last order I did from there, it was basically, I think it was nine or ten days. It was quick, man. It, I, it was no. There might be less, man. Is it? The, yeah. You just gave me. Yeah, yeah. Um, Three comics today from the States, yep. which I think we ordered last week. Yep, we got Bunny Mask 1 and 2, and you got um, My House on the Lake, whatever it's called. Which looks yeah. quite good as well. I'll be looking forward to doing that. But Bunny Mask number 1 by, who is this? Paul Tobin and Andrea Mutti and Taylor Espito. God knows how that's said. Um, this comic is actually one of the first comics in a long time that's made me actually want to start collecting a series again mm. as comics rather than just waiting for the trade paperback. And a lot of people too, we do know that are very straight and narrow. They'll do DC, Marvel, and possibly Image, and that's it. They won't go Aftershock or even IDW. Yeah, or Aftershock. Else. I don't really know much about Aftershock either, to be they honest. They do a lot of titles, man. They do a lot of titles. Them and even Dark Horse series. There's heaps of other titles. A lot of people are very purist. They're like, I want DC, Marvel... And possibly image because of a research in the nineties, and that's what they'll collect, you know. Well, this um, this one here, and I I do like looking yeah, at a lot good. of stuff that comes out. A lot of it I don't 
enjoy. Yeah. The last couple of months, though, the stuff that's been coming out, like this, I've mm. actually started really enjoying. This is called Bunny Mask. Uh, it's number one. It's called The Chipping of the Teeth. Oh, the yuck. very first page is of a little girl sitting in the kitchen with her father. Her father has a hammer and a chisel, and just he's chiseling down her teeth into... To make them sharp. To or make them sharp. Get rid little of them. No, just into little daggers. Oh. It's disgusting. Yeah, but you know what? It makes you want to read on. I knew you'd like it. Well, the thing is, it's actually just, it's hard to show a bit of horror or, or something interesting in a comic sometimes that's new and yeah. fresh. That, to me, straight away as a first page, is that's pretty new. I mean, you'd be loving that. And also, your third page, you'd be like, mm, Wait I'm up. really loving Second page. page, though, is just... Um, a doctor and a caregiver driving to the house where she's getting her teeth chipped out. The father comes out and stabs the, um, the caregiver straight through the bloody chest. Well, because she's with a busy stick. Body. Yeah, she's a busy body. Yeah. Busy body, sorry. She's going to be like, oh, what's going on here? Uh, none of your business. Oh, really? Let me have a look. And then report him. Nah, stab her with a stick. Well, that's exactly what it says. It's the snitch said you'd be coming. Said to give you a tree. So here you are. And you get the tree. And he stabs her straight through it. Pretty good. It's pretty interesting. Yeah, of course it is. Anyway, knocks out the other fella. And I, I won't tell you too much about what else goes on, but it, it is actually a very so interesting... Well, you won't very it. No interesting, one's it. It's, the art's amazing in it, by the way. Why does he turn to the Hulk here? Well, to be honest, the, the colours were... Um, um, the colours are actually strangely muted and green and yellow and a little bit putrid the whole way through. <clears throat> which actually adds it only adds it's quite to the uneasy, story isn't it's it? uneasy mm. you know it's, it's, it's nothing bright or it's black and white but with the sort of strangely greeny flesh coloured tones all the way through and I'll tell you what I'm, you've just given me the number two um, of this and I never order a number two of a comic normally no you don't you're number one only you're a number one collecting man I know this yeah but um, I've got number two here and I'm looking forward to reading it I'm stoked Excellent. Speaking of number twos, is there still a thing around like suppliers or uh, retailers only ordering less amounts of twos, making twos more available? No, I don't. I don't know, but I tell you what, I have found hard is um, Beta Ray Bill, um, which I've once said it's the first series of read in a long time, apart from Thor um, series six. But number two, I ordered it from the la the, the latest. Uh, well, sorry, from a local dude that I ordered from. It's not local. Actually. He's from New Plymouth. Uh, sorry, um, Dunedin. And um, number two never turned up, but then he goes, oh, your, your delivery's in and sent it, and it was it was like one and three, and I said, <laughs> cool, man, um, but where's number two? And he's like, they just never sent it from the US, so <laughs> it just, there is no bit to be, so, so I ended up ordering two in the US, and just in case he sent one, and I was like, well, I can complete another couple of sets or something. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. So, so wait up, so what were you <clears> saying, that, that they do, they don't do a number me. two? As yeah, a, well, they hold it. They hold it. Yeah, so like from from what I understood of um, sort of eighties and nineties, um, because of the delay of recording sales from a supplier or from a retailer back to a supplier, mm. um, often you'd get a whole bunch of new readers on number one. Like you want people to jump on there. Yeah. But then sales would be could be okay. Yeah. But everyone would hedge their bets on the second issue in case it was pants. And they were stuck with a whole bunch of stock. Yeah, yeah. So they would always... Which makes sense. Generally, mm. half or under order number two. Um, so that, you know, they're protecting themselves yeah, should, yeah, it, yeah. should so, it fall over and they don't have to hold too much stock. I'll be honest, Hadley, I think in his respect, for respect for that guy who does them subs, is that he got zero orders of that. <laughs> <laughs> so if he did do it, it's a very important ploy yeah. that he did because he knew that he wouldn't sell number three. Yeah. But I got number three anyway because on sub, so I did get number two in. Yeah, and, and, as I and, say, that uh, that what my understanding of that could they be pretty judged, outdated. They judged the printing on yeah, like on, 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 orders, on how it sort of yeah. I would say so, did on the money, uh, not here, but America. Yeah, but it must make money. it harder to get it out on time. Because then that would often, if the number two did go well, they would wouldn't have enough stock in the market, mm. so they would go to a second printing. Mm. Or, you know, a variant or an alternate. I'll be honest, like they had zero stock at that guy. <laughs> that I and, and you know what? They had the first zero. Time. Well, I actually physically went over to a place which, which I would never go to, which is in Hamilton, and they had zero stock there too. Which they have stock of everything. And there's another one I do read, which is Berserker, which you guys don't know from last year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
And they had a massive stock of that. They had two, threes, four, uh, two, right. three, and f- uh, uh, one, two, and threes. A lot of them. There's heaps of stock. But that Baz- um, Beta Ray Bill, which I was reading, nope, there was no number two, man. But I did get it from the States, and it didn't take that long. It was like 10 days, but that's what I have been reading, and I'll tell you what, it is good. And I did mention it last time. And there was a crossover at the beginning of it, um, pre the beginning of it, which is in Thor, I think number three, where Thor throws Molnir at Beta Ray Bill, because he asked Beta Ray Bill to join him and help him beat um, the Black Winter with Galactus as a hero, but he wouldn't be the hero, he would help Thor. He was like, no, I don't want any part of it. So he throws Molnir at Beta Ray Bill, and of course Beta Ray Bill's worthy, so he just grabs Molnir. And then I think he, from memory, he throws Beta Ray Bill back at Thor as retaliation, but Thor calls Molnir back and grabs Molnir and then breaks Stormbreaker with Molnir. So now, 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 now Stormbreaker's broken, which is the you know the weapon, the the chosen weapon of um, Beta Ray Bill, mm, the Golden Hammer, yeah, yeah, <clears throat> it kind of hammer axe thing, yes, and um, which breaks Bill's heart and he won't forgive Thor for it for now until it's written into it but he so what happens I won't go right through it completely because a lot of people probably haven't read it and I did kill it a little bit last time but so Battery Bill's here he hasn't got his hammer slash axe Stormbreaker he's obviously downtrodden as usual um, because of that not because of usually not usually but because of that and then he goes off in search of another weapon to help him transmute because he can change form with this particular weapon and he searches off and he goes off and actually this story's got freaking awesome um nowhere near as awesome as i thought it would get but way probably better even hmm. and he ends up going to um anyone will know it from thor ragnarok where thor's at the beginning of the movie he's in um i can't remember what the land's called but he's unchanged and he's in Surtur's Surtur's lair den right lair and, <laughs> Much um, like we're in your lair now. Yeah, correct. And um, <laughs> dungeon. And it's going to get weird. It's going to get weird too, just like that. So, Where are those chains? <laughs> yeah. So anyway, he's I'll break free. Um, he goes looking for Odin because Odin's left. Um, you know, um, Asgard now, and Thor's in charge of Asgard. He's now the ruler of it. So Odin Borson is like hidden away in somewhere, but Bill find, ends up ends up finding him, and on the way he gets scourged and pinned the troll. They help him find Odin. And they get Odin, and he's like, dude, I want my weapon back. I want Stormbreaker back. How do I do it? It's like, you're the only person I know who will know how to see it, the All-Seeing Father. And the All-Father, you need to tell me how I do it. And he goes, like, there's, there's no weapon that can do that. that. That weapon's gone now. These dwarves can create a new one, but they won't do it for you. There's no... I can't do that. He's like, there's only one weapon I know of, and it's the... Remember the Sword of Surta on Ragnarok, mm-hmm. where he stabs that sword into Ragnarok... Uh, sorry, Asgard, and kills it. Yeah. <clears throat> And that kills Asgard. That's the end of Asgard. This is the beginning of Ragnarok. It's a big flaming sword, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's right. Mm. And so, anyway, it's like, that sword is there, but mm. Surtur's missing. Surtur's not at, at home. He's gone. His daughter's looking after the realm where he lives. Dad. And he's like, she's not using the weapon. So he said, if you want a weapon that can do what you do, which is transform you and whatnot, have all these powers, you need to go there and get that sword. So Battery Bill's like, my life's not complete until I get this. So he goes to that planet, and he turns up there. And it's great. I mean, I've only read up to number four, but he's down there, and then everything's going sweet as like, um, what's this um, ship called? Um, Hadley the Scuzzle Butt or Scuzzle? Scuzzle I can't remember what it's called. Anyway, the ship that travels with Battery Bill, which is overseeing sort of Lord thing. It's a computer that talks to him all the time. Um, she has a weird transformation, which becomes an actual person. Hmm. And talks to a man. It's like, what do you? Who are you? What? Are you? And so I am the ship. I'm, I'm, I'm. You know, I'm that weapon that you use. So holy shit. Anyway, they get through there, and he, he she finally see him in part four. Where he goes up to the sword, Surtur's sword. He's like, oh sweet, he's gonna get the sword. And you I mean you know it's not gonna be that easy. Anyway, <laughs> he goes to grab it. It's like, all of a sudden you see the the weird horns that like Thor says, oh really large eyebrows, but it's it's, <laughs> the, it's the it's yeah. Surtur in the background. He's like. Oh, you thought you'd take that sword that easily, would you? But that's part four. It's only a five-part series from, from what I can gather. Ooh. But great read. I, I recommend to anyone, if you just want to see an offshoot of Thor, that's a great read, man. It's it's only Good a art. five... Uh, yeah, and it's decent art. Mm. Um, but it has Scourge in it and Pip the Troll. They're, they're quite good characters in it. And, and they're, you know, they're all gung-ho and stuff. 
But it's a really good read. Really good read. Um, um, the other thing I have been reading is um, This Land, which is done by a guy, Mark Abnett, which I didn't mention last time. Is that the, the Kiwi comic? Yeah. yeah. It is good. Done by Have you come across that, um, Hadley? I've seen it uh, on a few Facebook groups, but I haven't yeah. read or seen a copy or anything myself. It's really good, man. <coughs> Ara- Araha Comics, um, Mark Abnett, and there's a few other... There's a, I think there's... I can't remember where the artists are, but there's one... There's a Filipino artist on it, which I've, I have contacted for a commission, actually, so I'll see how that goes. I think it'll be... I think it'll come out amazing, but... Um, I read part one and part two. So the basic story was um, Helna, which is this lady who's from a certain tribe. So like, um, I wouldn't say like in, in, in Maori terms, like a, this tribe here and this tribe here. And it's not as easy as that because it's a comic, right? It's yeah. done, it's it's fabricated. Um, but there are certain tribes and she finds this um, god. I can't remember who the god is at the moment because um, I haven't read number one for a long time. But is it, I can't remember if it's... Um, Maui or who it is, but they, they capture this god. This god's been caught. Something's happened, like a gateway's opened. Anyway, the cool thing about this comic is that it's things that people can relate to. It's areas that you know, like Waitomo Caves, like Huntley. It's, huh, it's like the Waikato okay. River. All these things are, are still prevalent in this Axe Land, which is all, obviously Auckland, yeah. is Axe Land. And all these things translate to people that people know. They know this stuff. It's, it's, common, it's common knowledge to Kiwis, right? And, but the cool thing about it is, for me, is there's, there's a big um, presence of te reo in it. Hmm. So if you like te reo, if you want to teach your kids te reo, that, for me, is a really good format. Hmm. Because as we all know, comics are not, they're not like a written book, right, like a novel. They're more basic, but they, they t- they, it's black and white. This hmm. is the text. This is what you're going to learn. The, the picture shows you what's happening, but you read it, and you go, boom, and the context is there. Yeah. Okay. So, as far as I'm concerned, for Tereo purposes, um, if you're Māori, it's it's important to me. Like, I, I think that's important. Yeah. You can learn things. It's not, it's all written English, obviously, but the, the translation is done on the side of the word bubble. Boom. This yeah, is, right. Oh, so they have a bit of a glossary yeah, yeah. going so on. Yeah, there's Tereo, yeah. like I like Nam or something. Yeah, I, that's yeah. what I was saying. Yeah. I love Nam so, so, because so, they always had the glossary at the back yeah. and just go through yeah. and just learn a bit yeah. out of it. So, all of that is explained on the side, in a, in a side, you know, where they have an asterisk, they go, boom, and you go, that, oh, this reference, oh, is that, that is what that means. Right. So is it, is it actually based on, um, like, a, a myths and legends of New Zealand, or? Um, yeah, kind of, because all of the people, or the, the Tanifas and everything that are in it, they're explained in there, and they're explained to people who aren't from New Zealand, who aren't hmm. Māori. they explained New Zealanders. In, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's explained <laughs> in that particular way, like, that word means this. It's like yeah, if you read course. a Spanish read book and it goes, this yeah, right. Spanish text means this. Yeah, yeah, it's good. Um, and it, 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 to me, I think it's massively important for you've actually You've actually talked about this book to me personally oh, it's uh, good. quite a bit. You like it a yeah. lot, eh? And, I do. And also you, you've um, well, because discussed of, about this this guy, the artist, What's it, or the writer. Oh, well, the it? Mark Abnett. He's a Kiwi yeah, guy living in Scotland. A, he's so he's been locked down for God knows how long. But he did a Kickstarter and got on too. But he took a long time because, um, I don't know what you call him because um, I'm not fully fluent in it but it's like with with moldy elders elders they go you can have this word oh, this means this this is the context for that and he's had a lot of um guidance to do it so it's been passed it's yeah, like yeah absolutely been given, it's been given and to he, go ahead he told me people. that he's like i'm not going to re- re- um you know send this out until i've had it okayed by yeah, right. local iwi and stuff like this is what i want them to yeah, cool. i want it to be okay and it should be 100% it should be because yeah. if you don't do that people are not going to give it the credit it needs because it is a good story it's a really well read story and as far as I'm concerned um, once it's completed he's finished it's done and dusted the story's done it should be done to a hardback and be put into schools as far as I'm concerned oh, it's yeah. more important than reading well, that's um, a good, that's to become a, a mockingbird yeah, that's, that's or, or freaking uh, what was that other horrendous book you used to read as a kid uh, Animal Farm no <laughs> no that was, was horrendous that was too Watership Down the yeah, importance of being earnest <laughs> the importance of being nervous. It's the worst freaking book I'd ever read. <laughs> it's way more important than that. I know. It's, it, it's I know great. that. But I do know the book, but I don't think I ever read that. Oh, was it? <laughs> yeah, English class. I think English class in like fifth form it was done. Yeah, and we had read it. I'd never read we, it. We used to always have um, uh, what is that? Um, Heart of Catcher, Catcher in the Rye. Catcher in the Rye. Catcher oh, in the Rye. Yeah. The, the, the horrible paperback hey, version. Of nothing worse than going and killing a freaking pop star, everyone. <laughs> um, <laughs> But, but I'll tell you what, I'll tell Fuck you Fuck you, Mark Chapman. Yeah. <laughs> but but the, th- the thing for me happening, and honestly, 
if they was done to a trade paperback, that would be more influential as a book written by a Kiwi. Okay, he doesn't live here. But written by a Kiwi, introduced into schools. And for, more I'm, so than Margaret May is under the mountain. Yeah, possibly. Uh, or Terry Teo. Um, <laughs> I, don't, although, although, I don't think, actually, it wasn't Margaret May. It was or the Morris. Warlocks of Thunder Top Mountain Morris Boy. Someone, wasn't it? Someone um, Morris. But um, the thing what is. What was that last one? Warlocks of Thunder Top Mountain. <laughs> That's a um, that's a deep cut. <laughs> but but what I'm saying is, it, it's for its context, its bilingual context. It's amazing. Not every single translation is done. Uh, sorry, not every single word is is Tereo. But the translation is there. So if you read it, of anyone who doesn't know Tereo is not native speaker. That's a good clever. You way. can do it, yeah, and it's it's, it's, it. it's incredibly well done. Yeah. Man. it's like I, I don't know. I'm I'm not a big um, I'm not a big Tereo speaker or anything like this, and I'm probably not pronouncing it right, but the thing is, when it's it needs to be pushed and understood, Tereo, right? Because it's been lost for so long. That comic is, for me, it's going to be incredible. Incredible, because the story's good, the I character's like the amazing, that, the art's amazing, mm. and, the, and the fucking context of it is amazing. I like the fact too. that anything New Zealand gets out anyway. And oh, it should be. Yeah, anything. Um, anyone that's doing well... Where did you say he's based? So Scotland now. Scotland, yeah, he's in. What does he do over there? Um, well, I don't, he's just doing his Kickstarters, I imagine. Is he, um, is he still creating yeah, comics yeah. though, or is he? Um, yeah, well, he's so it's, I've only read one part one and part two. I think part three's been done as a Kickstarter, which I'll pick up from Mark One. That's where I got mine from. And if you want a copy of one, two, whatever, Mark One Comics Hamilton online, you order that. It's 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 a done dusted thing. It's awesome. Mm. Um, but I think part three, part four, might even be on Kickstarter right now. Right. Um, the only thing I didn't why I didn't do a Kickstarter because it takes so long to get here. You don't know when you're going to get it. It's like mm. I just wait till Mark One's got to order it online. Yeah, that's the reason. Well, if they're it. ordering it, and that's good. Yeah, and, and, the, and to be honest, and it should come. We should come back to say that yeah, we do get a lot online, but mm. always support a comic shop if you can. If you if you got a comic shop around <clears> you, <throat> get in there and buy whatever you can from oh. there. The only, the only stuff we do, we buy that we can't is just because we physically cannot get it. I mean, big kudos for Mark One though to get a Kickstarter coming and order, say, four or five copies of a Kickstarter. Yeah, that's amazing. Because um, they're way more expensive than a normal comic because it's such a low production run. Mm. But I think in the future with something like that, um, I'm keen to just have it so my kids can read it. And if even my kids don't want to read it, forget the full set of it. If I know someone's family wants to, pr- you know, um, promote Taroa, I'm like, you can have it, man. Because oh, that's such a good reader. I it's find not, it interesting when you said um, get into the schools. I mean, you must you really should. a hard back in the schools. It's good. It's like how we used to always run for Asterix at schools. Oh, Tintin, eh? Asterix. Asterix was number one. Tintin was number two. And that's, that's all like, I, that, well, that, to be honest, that's how I learned English. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just, I did, from, my, from my perspective, it's like, to me, that would be more, more important for teaching kids to read. Yeah. And not just read normally, but read bilingually. Yeah. To, to learn and it's it's not going to be a hard bilingual thing but there's words in there that are like um, important as far yeah. as Mary well, you'd cult- hope they know half of them well from anyway, from, you? from, from Mary culture's perspective it's massively important as far as yeah, I'm concerned totally. yeah. and um, I think it's just the promotion of it and and not only that it's a great story yep um, it's it's fantasticalized a little bit because the the artworks in there and it's and there's, you know there's, there's mm. really amazing characters like the Hulk and everything like this and there's like um, a dude who's like, uh, so like, not necessarily the Green Arrow, but um, say Hawkeye and stuff like this. There's, there's people like there's characters like them in there, mm. and I see why he's done it because they they identify. It's the identification of like oh, I don't know what that guy does. I know oh, what this of guy course, does. yeah, it makes it um, you know. And there's the underhanded value. There's enemies in it. There's proper enemies. So the enemies that, that are in this particular book, they're in Waitomo Caves. You know, and they go to Waitomo Caves. And it's like underground. It's like. Well, these guys, the the elements they use to be powerful, because uh, you know, there's like the Earth Mother and there's the 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 volcano. It sounds like a New Zealand version of Monkey Magic. Pretty much, <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> Except not not a hundred percent as good because that was television wise, but like pretty good, you know. Um, yeah, it'd be amazing. That does sound good. I will have. I will give it a read. You've got. You've yeah, got one or two. As soon as I finish them, you can have them read, man. They're they're good, man. I would I would be promoting that if I was a school. I mean, schools don't look at it. They look at real traditional text mm. and I don't I don't think it's the way to go I mean I think graphic novels as far as I'm concerned it's very e- way easier to keep a kid's um, attention with yeah. say gr- the graphic picture and then go and read it and they go oh, and then they get 
double context of like I understand yeah. exactly what's going on this panel. Done. Yeah. And to well, your if, point, a, if it's a word that you don't understand, you can usually get a reference yeah. on the yeah, picture, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. So you can start. Yeah. You, can, you can actually expand your vocabulary by quite a lot because yeah. you actually start. And to uh, to your point, context is massive. It is, mm. and, and seeing it used in that yeah. fashion yeah. just yeah. like helps reinforce it. So much. Well, it's like I said to Vaughan, I read those classic novels that were, were pushed on us in English, and I, I I had, I never realized I had vision problems, but I couldn't, I'd read a paragraph, I was like, far out, I have to read this paragraph again now, because I can't mm. understand what happened in there. I had to read it again and read it again and read it again. And I'd, do, I'd do a book a book review, and I'd go, oh, I'd just, I'd stop reading, so it's too punishing yeah. to try and get the context. Oh, just on the words. Well, because of the stigmatisms I had, I didn't realize it was a reading problem, but I was like, I had to read it because I couldn't concentrate enough because the words would shake. I'm like, I can't understand what the frick's going on. Mm. But even then, even then, my reading wasn't great. I'm like, um, but as soon as I, I would read, say, uh, Asterix and Oblix, um, like the Golden Fleece or something like this, I'm like, I don't know exactly what happened. Come yeah. On. It was my favourite one. So I just read that. That was a good one. Yeah. <laughs> and I just, I'd never forget it. I'm like, I knew exactly what happened the whole time. Mm. I, you could tell, not every single page, but I could remember what happened. Yeah, you? exactly. The way, the way you're speaking about this book reminds me of how I feel about, like, Lone Wolf and Cub. Like, yep. I have a, a real yeah. interest and in... Vaughn's in, read like, a little bit of that. Yeah. Um, Edo period Japan because yep. of, you know, A, the 70s and 80s we grew up in was very mm. um, Japanese, Chinese, action movie oriented. Yep. But oh, yeah. In particular, those books, to me, you know, like, just the way that they would use words, they would explain things, but then you'd, you'd have the glossary of the index there to be yep. like... Oh, they're talking about a Han. What's a Han? Yeah. You know, and who's you know who's this guy? That's who's right. that guy? And all those different things. And yeah, I, I can see that being invaluable. And, and you in start to learn those kind of those, a lot of the words become yeah. just normal to you. Then and then, then so does parts of the, the practices and and, and mm. culture and like just little things and behaviors. Yeah, yeah. That, that's, that's. I didn't awesome. realize until just recently, actually, a, a guy on Instagram because I, I see he had a, a thing. Come up about Lone Wolf and Cub and just going, oh, pick these up and just, oh man, these are great. And he went, oh, have you ever watched the um, the the old TV series? Of this, yeah. And yeah, I yeah. never, I, I didn't even, I never knew it was. I loved movie. it. Oh, way. dude, it was so good. <laughs> Freaking loved it. First episode had boobies on it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So they they did the they did the movie series and then they did TV series. And then there was like um. Well, when was the movies um set in like seventies or eighties? Yeah, it 70s? was like it was like seventies. And then there there was a so I think that the version of Lone Wolf and Cub that everyone uh, more people might know would be the movie Shogun Assassin, mm. which is parts of different of the the six different movies right. cut up into one storyline. Oh, really? So they did the six different. Well, I think it was six. Anyway, they did the the series of movies, and they were practically page to screen perfect adaptions oh, of perfect. the books yeah, well nice. that's unusual um, these days and they're beautiful some of my favorite movies um and then yeah so then i think an american company during the 70s 80s picked up the rights to it thought i'm not releasing six movies i'll release one let's yeah. trim it down and okay. they because it was an ongoing story they were able to yeah you know cut and change it was a continuation Sh- shave it up yeah. and fit it in and make it but still man really just long. Beautiful, beautiful. Oh, it was awesome. I, I, I actually really want to watch. Um, I've only seen little snippets of it, but it's, I've, I told Bram a couple of weeks ago. Man, I'm going to make sure I watch these and mm. get on to them because they do look amazing. It's actually a really good story. Yeah, but I I'll, tell you, I'll tell you what. what I watched with Vaughn not that long ago in his garage. Man, is Magic Monkey. It's so good. <laughs> oh, we had Trippy Magic Monkey. Oh, oh. We just watched. We watched Magic Monkey back to back. <sighs> Man, uh, uh, the first one where he shook over a mountain, I'm like, holy shit. Yeah. Oh, so dude, it was so hilarious. I don't know if, yeah. I think he might have turned up after I watched this one where he, um, Buddha just goes, oh, right, you can, um, if you get across my hand and to the end of the universe, um, Dragon Ball Z. um and come back, then yeah, you can do, oh, I'll let you free, you can do whatever. Yeah. So he flies these five on the cloud eight. amazing, on cloud eight. it seems like ages, and he gets these five pillars, he goes, oh, brilliant. And he says, yeah, he goes, oh, mate, I need to have a wee now. And he goes, I have a little wee like that. Comes back. Oh, it takes ages and ages, days and days, months and months, years to get back yeah. across. And what he finds out that um, he's never even left her hand. He's just pissed on her fucking fingertips on the end of it. <laughs> just such a ridiculous show but i love it but they're all they are all built on myth and, yeah 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 and stories and um and actually there was actually a tripitaka in real life yeah, yeah, yeah. that is actually based on fact 
it's which um, is an amazing thing. It's really interesting. Like seventies New Zealand was like kung fu movies. It like was. Bruce Lee. It was Bruce Lee. It was man. Monkey Magic, which was just Journey to the West in other countries. Yeah. I yeah. think in Australia it was just called Monkey, but everyone yeah. here it was Monkey Magic. Journey yeah. to the West, of course. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's that's the um that is actually the the the, the, the factual the story. kind of China, yeah. yeah, which was like then adapted into like. Dragon Ball Z I'll and tell you so kick, many other. I tell you what, it kicked the shit out of Woody Belly, man. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, so yeah, like, but you were saying your dad every time you went to the ridiculous. daycare store, eh? Ridiculous, not watching that shit. But, I, but I thought he loved it. I thought he loved no, it. No, no, but he, what he did love was Bruce Lee. Oh, yeah. did he? And yeah. um, we watched Bruce Lee, the 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 whole uh, the Big Boss. Um, um, Big Boss, what was the other one called? Into the Dragon. Um, Way of the Dragon. Way of the Dragon. Um, all those, we watched the whole lot, man. Damn. Because they have, they have amazing characters like Kareem Abdul Jabbar or like Chuck Norris or that have people on these. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, it's the final one, isn't it? But they had the massive tournament and Kareem Abdul Jabbar's there, um, Chuck Norris. It's, it's just a, some. You just thought, whoa, what, what the flip's yeah. going on Into here? Into the Dragon for me is one of those perfect movies. Yeah. Like, it's, it's pretty hard to find. I mean, there are cringy bits, but as a movie, it's it's pretty solid. It's something well, where I'll you can what, watch I'll, it from I'll, any point and just go, oh, brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I don't remember Big Boss when he goes to the Big Boss's house, and the Big Boss throws a dagger in him. He does a flip and kicks the dagger back in the... I'm like, holy shit. <laughs> is that possible? <laughs> I'm, 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 I said, is that possible? And the guy at school was like, bro, of course it's possible. Why would they do it on a movie? I'm like, okay, well, cool. Well, I, that was fact for me then. If you've trained for 25 years, of course it's yeah. possible. <laughs> Dumb like... For me, that was fact as a nine-year-old. I'm like, holy <laughs> shit. It is, can you... Oh, and we would do it at school. We'd throw sticks and then we'd do a roll. And <laughs> you know, at Glamorgan Primary, like, this is yeah, this is factual. I knew it was. That's actually less dangerous than when we used to watch WWF. I know. Fucking get I people know. to suplex them yeah. and smash yeah. them over yeah. or, or get them in the fucking headlock and just drop like... <laughs> <laughs> And the time we chucked Neil Winyard's um, brother off that frickin' into that old bus. broke his arm, mate. Eh? Mm, he landed on the back of it. He landed on an upside down desk. Oh, good. yeah, that'll do it. I don't know who threw yeah. that desk down there, but yeah, that was unlucky. Yeah. <laughs> it's probably him, so it's okay. It's, it's justice, isn't it? Good runs. He was mm. smaller anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, one, one thing I forgot to talk about last time for a TV show was Invincible. Oh, yeah. Have, have, you, you, have you seen it now? I have not watched any of it. Man, I'll tell you what. Um... I already enjoyed it. The first one was like, oh, it's a bit lame. And then it's end, a slow burn, though, man. That first episode. Oh no! But the end is not slow burn. It goes like this. Oh man, Hadley, you'd love it because it's actually quite a bit, very superhero-y, very soap opery, a bit of a mystery type of thing. Oh, he's getting his powers soon. When would he get them? Yeah. All of a sudden, he gets his powers, but he's still pretty lame. That's that's the son of yeah, the um, of of um, Omni Man. So to imagine a Justice League, a group of Justice League kind of guys. And then one guy um, who's a bit of an outsider. Who would he be? I don't know. He's oh, he pretty much on. Superman because he's got everything and no one else has. Yeah. And no one else has. I mean, Diana obviously has, um, you know, but it's like Wonder Woman's. But Superman can kill everyone if he wanted to. He pretty yeah, well, tell the what, story from the beginning anyway. So, anyway, so I don't know Invincible because I've never read it. I mean, I knew of it because it's image. You know, I just knew of it. But. Omni Man is obviously a guy who protects the world, and he's part of a super team, it's like Justice League, or whatever. And um, has, he's talking to someone one day, and he's like, he's talking to someone one day, and he's like, yeah, you know, you get your power soon, and blah blah blah. And he just works a normal job and goes to school. He's a normal kid, and you're like, oh, he's just you go, you're about 20, 30 minutes, and you're like, this kid's never get powers. This is boring shit. <laughs> and it's kind of it's kind of an anime style animation, yeah. so you're like, eh, it's okay. And then um, all of a sudden, it's like he goes through a bag in the rubbish, and he throws a fucking thing, goes to like the moon. You're like, oh shit, what's going yeah, on? Yeah, so he does get his powers, yeah. and he right at the. But the best part of that whole episode is, that, except for that lame dude, um, actual invincible, who's pretty lame as far as I'm concerned. Who's his father? His old man is absolutely the best character. He's a genocidal maniac, and he kills the super team because of meeting at their secret base and murders them all. <laughs> and when he murders them, they're not even a challenge. He just absolutely smashes them to pieces. You think, well, these guys, they're, they're nothing without him. He's the main pinnacle of this entire team. Yeah. But he's the outsider. He's like a guy who's not from this planet. 
He doesn't have superpower. He has superpowers, but not. He's what? very much a Superman kind Man. of theory. He's based on that sort when of stuff. When he hits that Aquaman character in the face and it just melts his face, I'm like, holy awesome. The rest of the show, you're just watching it and it's going, ah, it's okay. Yeah. It's, it's okay. Yeah. There's a guy, there's a kid, and the, you know his dad's a superhero, and the kid's not a superhero yet, and he's hoping to get his. And when you get the superhero, he gets the superheroes at the end, and they go, oh, brilliant, yep. Whoa, rah! Mm. And then it just takes such a dark turn. Yeah. It's quite dramatic. Cool. Like, they. they Everyone meets at their fucking um, super lair, super yeah. base, super yeah. dungeon. They're like, who's called us here? Who's called us here? What's going on? And what's his name? Omni Man? Yep, Omni Man. Omni Man turns up and he just destroys them, decimates them. But I mean, in You're the most violent way. Like, if you see some animation with some yeah. killing in it, it was pretty good, yeah, wasn't it? it was awesome, Ripping man. jaws awesome. off yeah. and <laughs> boss, boss smashing yeah. things like this. And, Oh yeah. Well, then, what, what what did he do to the mermaid then, guy? Oh. oh no, that that fish guy. He something happens and he just uses just something. It just pulverizes his head. It completely disintegrates. Yeah, it just sushi. but it's it's amazing. And then anything. Oh sorry. Um. Anyway, so the, the, that one is good. I said the one. It's a bit boring. I said, but the end. Oh man, oh. it's next level. And anyway, so these weird guys come in through a wormhole and attack them on the second series. A second episode. Which was quite cool. And the sun that helps these other sort of like Teen Titans type guys fight right. them. Because the other team's gone now, obviously. And they fight and blah, blah, blah. And they sort of struggle. But they, they win in the end and they get rid of these guys. But they come back. Well, the cool thing about that is that Omni-Man goes back through the wormhole and then genocides the entire race of people over there. So they never, ever come <laughs> oh, back. Oh, I forgot again. about that. Yeah. That's so good. It's so good. Yeah, so he actually follows them through. He chases yeah. them from, from um, Earth. Yeah. Goes back in and yeah. and it closes up, and the mum and his son is yeah. going, oh, so, oh, your dad, dad will take, so, ta- your dad will take some care of some business, and it clicks of that, and he genocides everyone, fucks up the whole world, yeah. <laughs> and genocides <laughs> a lot, oh, absolutely. Amazing. And he basically goes, um, now sent me a wormhole to go back to Earth now, and they do, and then he just genocides them as he takes off. <laughs> <laughs> just it was, it was weird. What's annoying is it's usually the only two last two minutes of each episode. I know. That's really, really good. Oh, no. Nah, oh, I'll be honest. There's some other episodes that I'm like... One and two were like... They capture you. Only you know, in the fact that the end two... End five minutes of each episode like... So good. You're like, wow. <laughs> That's amazing. This is... There's a lot of bollocks in between. <laughs> oh, there's <laughs> an absolute a shite, eh? Hey? A real Spider-Man shite where I'm in love with this girl and blah, 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 blah. Yeah, yeah. Which yeah. is another superhero. Um, which actually isn't another superhero at the time. So it's just some girl. It's like, oh, this is pain and punishing. It's like, oh, God. But in, in, in a sense, it's actually not bad. I could see Series 2, they're going to get the feedback and they'll make it. Hopefully make it wait. And there is a season two coming, isn't there? Apparently I so. so. I don't know. I've seen anything of it, but yeah. It's, it's an easy it is actually an easy watch. Yeah. But I would recommend watching it yeah. if you only for the first two episodes. It's because of the yeah. endings yeah. are amazing. And then two they, to genocide. <laughs> so good. Well you sound like a I, I know, that. but that's what's the stuff I But it was really it was yeah. quite it was quite a surprise after just like having a bit of a meandering story. Yeah, now yeah. it just went whoosh it's straight up for yeah. them. And you just go, This makes me want to watch Yeah, they punch each other in the last five It is sure. what I reckon what two thousand AD always did on a yeah. on a five pager sort of thing. Bit of fucking story bit of killing and then just a massive um, <laughs> yeah, uh, ending a, on a, a massive ending so that you just go oh man a, a cliffhanger can't wait to get to a, a massive thing. cliffhanger yeah. and then they do the next thing and uh, mm. and they do it I've been, I been I was meaning to watch it when it came out and I just forgot all about it it was better than I expected so I have to go yeah, back it yeah. was good I never I, you know one thing I haven't actually followed up and watched is um, that Jupiter's Odyssey I've never watched any of it you seen that uh, what was that? That's another superhero yeah, very type of team legacy type thing. I think, from what um, I, remember. I think, I, I tried to watch the first one, I got a bit bored because I've seen a few that look the same now. Yeah. And I think, but, um, uh, it's a, 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 I think it's a, I think it's a brother <laughs> and sister and their dad Ooh. is a, like a Superman kind right. of thing. And then they're trying to prove that they can do it. But I didn't watch a lot of it. I'll, I'll, I'll get on to it. We can talk about it next time, maybe. 